What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 185 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Doki Doki. Oh, damn. This is throwing things off. And also with us, Jared Petty, what are you going to do? I will take off my shirt and put on a <laughs> Spider-Man mask. No, now come on. Oh my God. Everyone knows no, no, I'm not shirtless Spider-Man, all Every, right? Everyone knows that. Everyone. I just take the man's photos. Come on, like Jared. That. That's good. That's Dude, real. Look at how much That's weight you lost, Jared. You're doing it? great. Oh, uh, no. I'm big old, big old man. So I have tiny, tiny nipples, so. though. You, you sure do have do. some tiny nipples. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Why have we not done stuff? it where he comes in and we should do a bit because this would be fictional where he comes in like this in the shirtless Spider-Man mask and I'm like, see, we're in the same frame. <laughs> 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 this is the kind of funny games cast each and every week we get together to talk about video games, all the things that we love about them because video games are cool. It's true. In fact, kind of funny.com uh, slash store. Yes, you can get the t shirt. I love that shirt a lot. You can also go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to watch this show live as we record it for just one dollar. Or you can get the VOD early on Fridays if you support us at the right level. Or you can just wait and get it for free on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, 9 a.m. on Mondays or on podcast services around the globe, whatever you want to listen to. We're there, baby. We're there on Spotify. We are We're there on we the Pod. We're there on the Apple Podcast. We're there on Google Store Play. You take a couple of tin it. cans. You put a string between them. You pull them taut. If you, you listen real hard, you'll start to hear Kevin's laugh. Yep. That's how it works. Yep. <laughs> there you go. I like to think that. Uh, you know, I guess that's it's morbid. But What's I'd like to think that huh. one wherever Kevin does get killed at in this office, he'll haunt that office. Not I don't know if it'll be this office. It'll come back here and haunt this. I'm but like live forever. Sure, I'm sure you will. I'm, I'm sure reasonably will. sure Kevin will be killed by equipment sometime in the next week. Next equipment? Week? No yeah. way. It would have got him by now. He's been yeah. working on those computers for two months straight. No, I, I definitely think either like the shock mic's going to get him one day, yeah. which we really should get rid of because it's just not okay. Or he's going to be like speared through the middle, like Omen style, by some kind of falling like girder. I think that's more the, likely. I, no, I love Kevin. Everybody knows this. Mm -hmm. I love Kevin. He does the most around here, I would say. You understand that? Kevin surprisingly is going to die in the most mundane fashion. Yeah. He'll just pass away in his sleep one day. Very old. Very, just like very die small. one of the boring deaths. Yeah. Cause like it's yeah. the thing he would have, he's got the Leatherman. He's burning his shoes. Why he welds. He drives cars. Sometimes doesn't have any brakes. Like he d he's living on the edge all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like Keith Richards. You'd expect him to be dead already. Right. You'd expect his crazy That's lifestyle to caught up to him and it won't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, Keith Richards can't die. Everybody knows that. He's yeah. fucking immortal. This yeah. is like a conversation we had back in the day after we had graduated high school at Tim Gettys. We yeah. went out to one Lone Star Steakhouse. Okay. Because okay. we liked their wings a lot. It's yeah. when we were falling in love with wings. Wings weren't a big enough place to have their own wings at the time. Also, like, the, the, those, those yeast rolls. Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, they had the they, yeast rolls. Yeast rolls, he said. Yeast rolls. But they were, this is the thing. This is before Outback did it. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. But they had the loaf of bread, the brown bread that you cut in half. Oh, and it was like Star? super was soft. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my steakhouses mixed up. Anyways, though, so we go there and eat that. And we had a conversation freshman year of college. Who do you think is going to be the first person to die mm -hmm. from our graduating high school class? Okay. Yeah. And I picked the one girl that was like honor society and awesome and super nice. And he's like, how do you think she's going to? I'm like, She's gonna get the mail and a car's gonna hit her. Like it's like it's not gonna be anybody we expect. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not going to be the crazy kids who get in Were fights. Right? So they drive. I, not that I, I didn't get it right, but very similar. Mm. It wasn't that very nice girl. It was a different very. But nice it was girl. a mundane death. Exactly. Well, I don't want to get into it. Okay. But it it wasn't it wasn't a newspaper headline death. No, it wasn't okay. like you know, fucking gremlins came out and got her. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoyed this Bad type life of choice. great content, uh, there was a lot more of it in in the pre-show. Uh, Greg actually told a really good story about. His infamous <laughs> actually layer, layer said, review, yeah. uh, at IGN and like there's a lot a lot of details there that yeah. I did not know. It's, yeah. it's really interesting if you're into here's the, video game media history. Here's now, the epilogue for you, of course, uh -huh. is that uh, I don't want to say the name because I feel like I know it. Do you remember the guy in charge of Factor Five? No, no. I want to. Uh, Kevin won't be able to Google these words. All right. Anyways, the guy who's in charge of it, I'm going to say Julian Eckerbright. Does that sound right? That sounds I, right I to me. I don't. I don't. Know. Can you give me a, a search on that, Kev? Does Does Ecker. the dude's name matter? He's, no. Well, yeah, because it was some, a, 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 a kind of funny best friend in early, early, early Beyond fan went okay. to that GDC where they debuted it for the first time with real yeah. controls. Okay. And he walked up and he was like getting, he's like, oh my gosh. And he's like, oh, Laird. And he's like, yeah, you know, try the new control. And he's like, wow, this is so much better. It's Greg Miller was right. And the guy literally was like, like, just like oh. dead, like get out of here. Oh, oh man. I said, <laughs> who do you think ran 
Factor Five. I think it was Julian Eckerbright. <laughs> and and what you bring up is the Vector the Man of Wikipedia. Of Wikipedia. Vector Vector Man of Wikipedia. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Then the second time I knew that I didn't hear you right, so I was just like, fuck it. I'm gonna do Have it. some dignity. Vector At least man. make it Game Freak's Pulse Man if you're going to bring up. Oh, oh, man. Keep going the show. I'll find it myself. Oh, oh, no, so that's a Patreon no. producers. I was right. More. I was right. Julian Eggerbite. Right. Warren Moore, Eric Heitz, and Tom Bach. The the lucky three, the big three. Sup, Tom Bach. Tom Bach. Tom Bach. Yeah. Eric Heitz. Tom, Tom Bach. Bach. <laughs> Thanks for that. Tom Bach helping me keep Cop Lip afloat, too. Thanks, Tom. Before we get into the games that uh, we've been playing, B -b 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 Jerry. Games. Yes, sir. We've just been having a moment in time. You know what I mean? He big fan of hype over here, Tim Geddes. There's some hype. And there's been a lot of hype going on. Like, let's. Uh, here, the okay. platform is yours. The platform is mine, and that guarantees that I have absolutely close the window that I prepared to have ready for this segment mm, because mm. you can count I'll on start me it off right. to ruin Audi the Musha, Out of nowhere, they just decided, oh, hey, we're just going to put out a remaster on every system, including the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> Why? How? They finally listened to you. They knew you wanted it. You've it, been predicting it forever. I'm extremely, extremely excited about this, obviously. Of course. Musha 1. Uh, a classic game in my history. Yeah. Um, very short game. Yeah. About five hours to get through the game. I'm looking forward to that. That sounds like a great amount of time to play a, a very old video game for me. Um, especially on the go. That sounds great. But the big difference is they're adding analog stick support. So finally, it's not going to have the horrible tank controls of the old Resident Evil games. And it'll play like Onimusha 3, Demon Siege, where you had analog support. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be great. But that means you're probably going to get through the game even faster. So I think it's going to be a three-hour game. Well, you know what? A good <laughs> three-hour our game. I'm in. A, yeah, I'm, I'm in. in. I'm totally in. I love a good short game. And I apologize for not being ready on the draw there. Good. Tim Geddes, I had this brought up and somehow closed it. Here's the hype, ladies and gentlemen. Something weird is happening to this world. We got a game show host for president. That's strange. There's a lot of other weird things happening. The Berenstein Bears or the Berenstein Bears, some other weird stuff like that. Who knows what's taking place, but... Wait, hold on. Tim went wide-eyed. Are you aware of this? You know the Berenstein Bears, right? Yeah. How would you say it? Berenstein Bears. Right. right. When you actually look at the cover of the book, it's Berenstein. Like, everyone says it the wrong way. Everyone thinks it's one thing. And it's actually, they've all... So there's a lot of theories that we're living in a simulation and someone went back and, re, like, retconned that. And we all remember it the way it was. The Berenstein fucking Bears. And then now... But you look at the book covers and they're Berenstein it's Bears. It's clearly spelled differently. Hmm. Yeah. It's just clear as day. But all of us remember something different. It's weird. Okay. I also, remember them those singing the song. Yeah, bears. it's a little strange. So... What's happening in video games? We are getting sequels and or spinoffs. Or just remasters. Or remakes. Patapon 2, HD, PS4. Grandia, Languisher, a sequel to Dragon's Trap. And yes, I know there was a Monster World 4. I've played it. I love it, etc. Please don't keep telling me that. It was for the Sega Genesis. Well, actually, it was for the Sega Mega Drive, etc. Because it was exclusive to foreign markets. But anyway, it's a wonderful game. But we're getting a sequel to Dragon's Trap. And I'm saying it's a sequel to Dragon's Trap because it was inspired by the success of Dragon's Trap on the Switch and other platforms, etc. We're getting a sequel to freaking Windjammers, Streets <laughs> of Rage 4, Woo -woo! Shenmue 3, Samurai Gun 2, coming to Switch where it belongs. Ladies and gentlemen, the best four player combat game ever made by people. Yes, we were I include about Power Smash Stone Brothers earlier. Power Stone's great. It's not coming yet. Samurai Gun is perfect. You can understand it in two minutes, and you will yeah. never, ever, ever get tired of it. It's so perfect. Perfect. It's Towerfall, but better. Speaking of Towerfall, also coming to Switch, and Towerfall's amazing, as you mentioned before, Onimusha. Then we got things like Mega Man 11, Mega Man's back. What the heck's happening there? We got an X collection coming out. Wait a minute, does that mean we're going to get an X sequel? Mega Man X9, is it going to happen? Killer Queen Black, yeah. arcade yep. game, Let's go. coming to Switch. Got a freaking Dragon Quest 11 single-player Dragon Quest game on a console for the first time since Dragon Quest 8. That's happening right now. Octopath Traveler brings back that classic Final Fantasy-style gameplay Valkyria that Chronicles we all 4. love. Valkyria Chronicles 4. Who'd have ever thought that was going to happen, much less as a mainline AAA-style game? Wasteland 2, one of the best games nobody played, coming to Switch now. What the heck is going on there? Battletoads is getting a sequel. Then we've got things going on, like the, all these retro-inspired games going on. You get this wonderful, wonderful Circle of the Moon. Or, my geez, there's a mental <laughs> fault for you there. Curse of the Moon, yeah. the not-sequel to Castlevania. Of course, The Messenger going on right now. So, everything old is not good. As a matter of fact, most old games suck. Yeah, that's true. But the ones that are good are really good. And this bizarre thing is happening that hasn't happened for like 10 years, where people are putting real money 
behind sequels, remakes, and retro-inspired games. And I've got a theory about this. Lay the theory on me, Jerry. I'm gonna lay that theory down on you. I think that what's happened is that these have gone from being a novelty or a marketing gimmick to a genre of their own. Retro is now kind of a, remember the genres are sort of made up anyway, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're not real. Retro is kind of now a crossover between a well-established style of indie development house 2D side-scrolling or RPG gameplay that's relatively easy to make resource-wise. Coupled with those nostalgic beats or looking to old things for inspiration or just being able to walk into a meeting and say, I wanna make a punchy fighter game. We won't fund that. I wanna make Streets of Rage 4. We will fund that. Why will they fund it now? Because these games are selling better than they have in ages. I've been talking to people throughout the industry about the release, a lot of smaller retro-y style, retro-inspired games compilations. They are selling ridiculously well right now. Switch yeah. has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Other factors have a lot to do with that. So you can go to an investor suddenly, or you can go to a venture capitalist and you can say, look, yes, you can invest $50 million in producing AAA game. Yes, you can invest $50,000 in an iOS game and there's a one in a thousand chance you'll make any money on it. But if you do, it'll make a lot. Or you can go to us, you can give us a half a million dollars, a million dollars, and you will double your money in a year or two. And we can pretty much guarantee that. Yeah. That's so rare in this industry. It's happening right now. And these games are that sweet spot gateway. I do not know how long that's gonna last. Forgive the sermon. I'm excited. This is some hype. It's a great time because these games, generally speaking, have been good of late. That's the crazy bit. Sure. They're not cheap cash-ins. They're high quality examples of a genre that's been building for a decade and has now reached that kind of wonderful sweet spot development peak. Sort of like when 2D platformers started on the NES and then at the end of the SNES era, they were just like sublime. Do you think part of this is, we always talk about trends and you can trace things back, right? Are we seeing the fruits of Shovel Knight's success right now in terms of, Shovel Knight really came, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's tons of retro inspired games yeah. that have done great. But Shovel Knight was the one that seemed to break through everywhere. Everyone loved it universally. It's on ever. It was on everything. It continues to be on everything. They're still adding to it new modes and fucking shit for free all the time. Yeah. He's everywhere. The world that Cave Story created, Shovel Knight mm -hmm. made profitable. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And they built those relationships. I think we're seeing the synergy of a lot of independent development. I mentioned Cave Story, a bunch of other things in that space, and Steam, which are, there's always been a market for this stuff with the mainstream, highly recognizable success of something like Shovel Knight, with Nintendo's decision around the same time all that was happening to kind of make a couple of high profile 2.5D games with Switch. And it's all coming together at exactly the same time. Mm -hmm. And just meeting in this kind of perfect sweet spot where there's a market for these games that didn't exist even a year ago, or at least people didn't recognize it as existing. Sure. People are ready to spend some money on good quality revisitations of old style games with new mechanics, because that's what the best of these are. I mean, you play you play Curse of the Moon. I, I mentioned it's not just oh, this gives me the feelies. It is a ridiculously well designed two D exploratory slash straightforward platformer with a lot of really innovative game elements. And, and that's, that's like Celeste special. for me, where it's like yep. it's not just like oh, here's this nostalgia driven two D platformer. It's like this is this is up there with Super Mario three. For yeah. me, where I'm like, these are both equally good games. Uh, it's just different time and different experience you have with them. But Shovel Knight, I think the key thing it had going was that it wasn't the first. It was the first to get it right and really find its audience and the audience being the hardcore gamer yeah. that doesn't want paid DLC and doesn't want this. And they're like, look, we're going to have have a great core game that is inspired by this or that, but it's not Mega Man. It's not Mario. It's kind of a mix yeah. of elements that make sense um, from all of these into a great game and then we're going to have a DLC plan where the DLC is free. And when you treat the, the consumers correctly, they're gonna be there for you and support you. And that's why with Shovel Knight, they've seen such success on, I would love to see a breakdown chart of how many people that own Shovel Knight own multiple copies. Yeah. Because I mm -hmm. feel like, the I would say that probably not the majority, but I would say a good 30% of people that own Shovel Knight own it in multiple places. Buy it every place it comes buy to it, or yeah, buy it in multiple places. To support, the, to support Yacht Club because they've proven that they're not giving up on this. This game came out in yeah. 2013, 2014, yeah. I want to say. Yeah, 2014. Um, and there's been three Major expansions, expansions yeah. that are full games after that. They were, were given in the same thing. And then the Treasure Trove eventually, they kind of retroactively packaged it. But if you own the game before then, you get all this stuff. 
Then they announced more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. It's just the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I and I think you're correct on that. I own at least two copies. I think three. Um, uh, a Shovel Knight. Love it to death for that. The other bit that these have in common, you mentioned Shovel Knight, is an original IP, and I do think an original IP was what this needed to kind of make this, oh, let's go back to the sequels to get things funded thing. I mean, for example, you know, Dragon's Trap, Streets of Rage, that's that's a guy who took a, a literally a 30-year-old game and remade it. Now they're like, we'll take something else because you proved your, your, uh, your aptitude on that. We'll trust you with another beloved franchise. But another thing that's happening is a lot of these have been dormant for a long time. They have not gotten sequeled to death. Sure. They got sequeled to death back in the day and people pumped out more and more and more and more and more copies. It's kind of like what happened with Tomb Raider where they made five of them in like, you know, five years sure. and then the series vanished for several years. These games have had a long time to sleep. It's a great point. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think you see Messenger resonating with people, right? Of like, oh my gosh, it looks like Ninja Gaiden. And it, when was the last time you had that side scrolling? That's how it is. Full disclosure, of course, Jen works in that game. But like, you know what I mean? Like I, the reviews speak, speak for themselves, I feel like. Yeah. Well, 2D platformers went away for an entire generation. Yeah. You know, like on the N64 PlayStation 1 generation, it's like, there, of course, there was a handful of them. Yeah, but yeah it's the not Stall like, and Mischief Maker and, 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 and things Quinoa like that. And, and yeah. things like that. But it's like there wasn't this, you know, where 2D platformers were kind of like what video games were yeah. <laughs> uh, on the NES and SNES generation. Yeah. And then there was such a long gap. I mean, just when you just look at Mario games, there wasn't a 2D Mario game. 1996 Super Mario World 2 came out. Mm-hmm. We didn't get another 2D Mario, and even that's like debatable of if it's a core Mario game. We didn't get another one until New Super Mario Bros. on the DS in 2005. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's a big a gap. long wait. There was this idea that they were unmarketable. People wanted to highlight the technology. It's hard for us to remember this now, but there was a time that 3D was so new that some people picked up the controller and didn't understand it. Sure, they liked that about it. They wanted you to be mystified by what was happening. Wow, Mario is a cartoon, and it was mind blowing. You guys remember that? Oh yeah. Oh god yeah. But they didn't want to make the hardware seem less powerful than it was, so there was some deliberate suppression especially early on, of, of making this kind of game for that kind of platform. That was old style. This was new style. And it was only when people realized that you could make games cheaply and people would still buy them. Because these games do, or did at least, cost less to make, generally speaking, than a state-of-the-art 3D platformer. And I think that remains an advantage to this day for this style of gaming. Also, RPGs. We've talk, been talking a lot about platformers, but a lot of these on here also have an RPG edge to them. And that's something else. I mean, Grandia? Grandia is getting... I'm going to get a Lunar game. I know it. We're going to get Dark Cloud eventually. I, I, you know, and that's... I, I, or maybe more exciting, uh, maybe eventually we're finally going to uh, see a uh, Golden Sun. Uh, I think. I, and that is, we're building towards that. And I feel yeah. like, what, especially when it comes to the Switch and it comes to nin- what Nintendo kind of has a, a hole in its first party lineup, it needs a JRPG. And mm-hmm. I feel like Golden Sun would be the right By the answer way, for that. We can stick Golden Sun, we can finally stick Waluigi in Golden Sun because it's Camelot where he belongs. So again, let's stick him over there. I guess. All right. <laughs> sure, Jay. Yeah. But with the games you're talking about, there's like multiple tracks because there is the, the 2D retro games that we've seen like at this point. A, a, comical amount of yeah. um, over the last 10 years in the indie scene. Um, but then there is the JRPGs uh, side of it where a lot of these games are getting second chances, third chances in a, in a lot of ways. And there is an audience of people that want to play them on something like the Switch. But then there's the other side of things where it's not so much a uh, retro realization of 3D games being like brought back, mm-hmm. but it's more uh, in terms of like from the indie side of things. Like I guess we saw ukulele and yeah. uh, um, a couple attempts, but they didn't hit in the same way of just like a simple remaster. Crash Bandicoot being a good example yeah. of it coming out. Still, like I think it just got beat from the Amazon UK from the yeah. number one yeah, spot for since it came out. Like that's yeah. insane. Um, but there is a nostalgia now an intense nostalgia for playstation one era and now even up to onimusha like there's a nostalgia for a ps2 game yeah. right and that coming out I, I can't believe we're getting onimusha because of all the licensing issues of the the actors liking this like you i don't you might know this you probably don't know this they're for the remaster that they're putting out they need to change the entire soundtrack because it was discovered that like years after onimusha came out that the composer plagiarized. Oh, great. Like, oh, I didn't know that. A ton of the music in Onimusha. So they had to put, like, totally redo and recreate a whole bunch of stuff. That's the type of effort that I'm like, Capcom's not going to put that into this. Yeah, game. that reminds me of, like, the Ayabrea stuff around Third Birthday, where, like, they can't call it Parasite Eve because that's a novel title. So they have to call it Third Birthday. And suddenly, so like, the same characters. It's, it's same so thing, weird. But, but yeah. when you look at Capcom over the last, like, 
I would say five years ago, we were all looking at Capcom like, are y'all on the way out? Yeah, like, exactly. You're making a lot of bad decisions here, and like I, I don't know about this. And then in the last two years, you know, re from Resident Evil Seven through Monster Hunter World, through now to like a Mega Man Eleven, that for all intents and purposes, people say is as good as the other ones from what they've played. What I have played of Mega Man Eleven is dope. That's mind blowing based on how it looks and based on how the reveal kind of came off to people. But there's a pattern that we can look at where they released Resident Evil Remake. Uh, one, the yeah. original one, on HD systems, and then mm -hmm. they released the the collect like they went through all of them. Where it's like yeah. you can play Resident Evil Two, you can play Code Veronica, and Resident Evil Four, Five, Six were released as downloadable titles, right? Yeah. And then eventually we got Seven, and now we're getting Remake Two. Sure. Um, and so you're saying you're thinking the same thing for Onimusha? I'm hoping, beyond hope. But moving no, over from I, that, I, it's I, not just Resident Evil because Mega Man. We get Mega Man Legacy Collection. Yeah. We get Mega Legacy Collection too. Mega Man X Collection. Now Mega Man. 11. Well, it's because I mean, Devil May Cry. It's Capcom figured it out, right? It's like when when we were all like, "Are you going to wear out? What are you doing? You're making bad decisions." They understood. They saw the financials. They saw the critical reception. They saw their audience and understood that as well. I'll. It's something that's rare, and to rare, and I mean in the way that I don't, I don't think it's ever happened before in my career, but. It was what was the uh, so what was the Resident Evil before Resident Evil Seven? <laughs> Resident Evil Six came out right and didn't set the world on fire. People didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somewhere sold like a motherfucker. Sure, but again, we're talking about drifting in the wrong direction, right? Yeah. And, and not knowing what your roots are and stuff like that. Capcom after an E3, and I mean after an E3 day where we did the whole live show at IGN and all that shit came in, and I've, I I was introduced to these people that time, and I, I don't know them since or whatever, but they were heads of Capcom. They were high up in the food chain. They came in and sat down with me, Pear, and a couple other people from IGN just to talk. It wasn't like mm -hmm. this, would have, but it was like, what are we doing wrong? What do you see that we're not doing right? And we kept bringing up Resident Evil. Of like, well, you know, yeah. Resident Evil isn't at all Resident Evil anymore. And that was the thing, blah, blah, blah. And it was, I think, a tour for them of Let's talk to the people who are talking to the people. Yeah. Like, it's hard to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? When you're talking about sales is great, but, like, reception's not, and this isn't happening, blah, 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 and Twitter and that, and the boards, and Capcom Unity, and, like, where do you go to try to get it? And it seems like they understood that, all right, cool, let's not simplify, but go back to basics. What it, what makes us Capcom? What makes our franchise is Resident Evil and Mega Man and so on? And two, two parts to the, that come to that. If you're working inside a, a large game company, I think one of the reasons they came to you is that you need expert leverage if you're going to get things changed in a place where decisions happen by consensus. Mm. If you walk in and say, well, the data shows this, somebody else might say, well, the data shows that. But if you walk in and say, we sat down with the experts, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. people that have their fingers we went to all the these pulse, different sites, yeah, yeah. and we come back with that, you know, somebody's much more likely to listen to that yeah. report and actually make measure changes changes, even if they have internal vested interest in doing otherwise. Also, Capcom kind of cut lightning in a bottle. You mentioned Mega Man Legacy Collection. We had Frank Sfaldi on here just a couple of weeks ago. He was the director on that game. And uh, Frank, or director or producer, hold on, one of the two. Anyway, Frank talked about how, I mean, that game sold gangbusters for them. Uh, yeah. Some of that was the TLC that went into it. Some of that was an un unanticipated amount of demand for it. But Capcom's been very public about the fact that Mega Man 11 happened because Legacy Collection blew up. Right. I mean, they also just, they made a small project that turned out to be a superb undertaking and people flocked to quality. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Well, it's timing too. I think that they're not being a virtual console right now is definitely creating this uh, gap for kind of archival collection content. And especially when it's done right, like this is not the first time there's been a Mega Man collection, mm -hmm. but the, they weren't done right. Like yeah. on PS2 and GameCube and stuff, they've had the buttons uh, mapped incorrectly. Oh Lord, that the, the, the GameCube one where you can't remap the buttons is, is still one of the worst things that happened why in would, video games. Why? And I yeah. feel like a lot of collections back then, the Sonic uh, Mega Collection back then had similar issues where it's like mistakes would be made. And I feel like now, these uh, collections are being looked at as premium content, not just like, eh, here's an afterthought. Some of them are. Now, Some of them, and yeah, of course, there's really bad examples. Well, well we, I want to think about that, for example, but even there's something in between, too. There's really bad, there's really good. I mean, look at, you know, Fantasy Star is going to be re-released with freaking auto-mapping. Mm -hmm. That's going to turn Fantasy Star from an unplayable, for most people, high-quality old RPG that they're not going to try to a game that you can actually play with modern sensibilities. Just like That's Onimusha. Incredible. That's incredible. Getting analog no. support to Onimusha is a game changer because I don't think that game would hold up at all 
uh, if it was still tank controls. Will it hold up even with analog? I don't know necessarily that the first one will, but elements of it definitely will. And the the cool there's just something cool. That game was it felt like a horror game yeah. because it had its Resident Evil roots, right? Yeah. But it's just like it had such a different vibe than things that we've, we've seen before. And then I, I I feel like it only gets better with two and three. No, I do. Th- I do want to walk this back for a second, though, to talk about those collections and the between space. So Mega Man Legacy Collection, ridiculously well put together. All those challenges, jump mm-hmm. into any boss fight, huge museum. Legacy Collection 2, not produced by the same people, much less of that stuff. Mm. Mega Man X Collection, X Collection 2, great games, but... Not nearly as much of that stuff. Not quite the same degree of really in-deep TLC on it. Mm-hmm. So we always have to be vigilant about this stuff uh, because it wasn't immediately, you know, no, they didn't try to hide anything. But if you're just a consumer picking up the box, it may not be transparent that it's not quite as lovingly crafted mm-hmm. as that first one was or something maybe like, you know, Disney Afternoon Collection might have been. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where we got to keep our eyes because people, we, we all like to make as much money as we can. And you don't want to let it slip either. So, mm-hmm. you know, but it's just making building, good stuff. It is building the message towards we want a sequel to this. We want to see more of this. So it's like I I'm going to buy Onimusha on on yeah. Switch because I want to show people that I want Onimusha 2. Yeah, I definitely want Onimusha 3. And I, this is like one of those like year of dreams to get high moments. If we ever see an Onimusha fucking three remaster, I'm going to be shocked because Gene Reno and like alone, I think, is going to limit that from happening. I got cynical. Uh, I love this industry and I remain very optimistic about it. But you spend enough time in it, sometimes you, you you do see wonderful things happen. You see miracles happen. You believe in it and they keep you going. But you also see a lot of things die in the vine. Some things you can never talk about that you watch die in the vine. Get really close. It's kind of like movies. You know, there's movies. The thing with movies is movies get announced first. I can't remember who first pointed this out, but I was talking with somebody about it recently. Movies get announced and then they never happen. Video games are the other way around. Video games get worked on a really long time and then they get canceled before they're ever announced. Mm. And, and then outside some of footage will eventually leak <laughs> on yeah. Unseen 64 and you're like, what the fuck? Exactly. And so we hear about it behind the scenes from people sometimes, but we, we never get to talk about it or, or it's just rumors flying around. So we, people don't realize how many things get close and don't happen. A long period of that, combined with the fact that I realize that my interest, interests are very niche and narrow, I like certain kinds of games more than others and those tend to fall into into maybe a smaller bucket make me think that stuff like this just can't happen very often if you told me three months ago we'd be having this discussion about this lift i would have laughed in your face you would have guffawed 10 years ago yes this was happening there was a lot of money to be made in it and the sky seemed the limit now weirdly it seems that that's resurging again god bless the switch that's what i got to say about that Mm. Jed? Yes, sir. You've been playing some video games. I've been playing some video games. You reviewed Dragon Quest XI. I over did. At IGN. Echoes of an Elusive Age for Ye Old IGN. My review up there right now on IGN.com. Just Spoiler, popped up. What was it? Uh, it's real good. Uh, I gave that game a great rating of 8.8. Hey! Uh, that's the score. That is a superb, meaty, wonderful RPG. Uh, I Have you, either of y'all ever played a Dragon Quest game? Just Builders. Just build. Oh, builders, builders. I was like, hey, it's on Vita. This is great. I'm in. Yeah, that's a great game. I loved it. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Builders it. wonderful. I, I didn't. I think I didn't realize that, Greg. I didn't mm-hmm. know you were into builders. There you go. Oh, you, we should have had a builders club. We should have. You excited about builders too? No, no, no. I had my fill with builders one. There's I some, got crazy for a second, like I was gonna platinum it and had all these things saved to web browsers and never ever did it. See, there's things I would have fixed about builders that I bet you builders two quality of life okay. stuff will make okay. the game more fun. I, okay. I, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, uh, what do you want to know about Dragon Quest Eleven? I, I want to know how long it took you. Okay, so. The main quest took me about 65 hours, oh, shit. Uh, and it could easily have taken me longer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't, like, blast through the world or anything like that, but I also didn't super take my time. I went around, and I smelled the roses, and I did some optional content here and some optional content there and hunted some things out. From The thing is, the optional content isn't always overt because, yeah, there's side quests, right? And, yeah, there's hidden areas. But what I wanted to find was the secret stuff tucked away in corners. Sure. That's always my, my favorite part of a Dragon Quest is there's just stuff hidden everywhere, and it's not collectibles. It's stuff that makes you stronger, always. Mm. Everything you mm. find. 
is either a weapon item, piece of gear, or a crafting material that'll lead you to better weapons, it's worth items, it. or pieces of gear. Yeah, and, and, and none of this cosmetic. This is all, you go to the casino and play the casino games, it's about winning unique prizes. You can only get there. You go and you hunt midi metals down, they're hidden all over the world like collectibles. You can cash those in for awesome equipment. Gotcha. Everything is about getting stuff. And and Dragon Quest ultimately, and, and this really goes all the way back, is a kind of a very friendly, semi-story driven, colorful version of that classic dungeon crawler formula from the early 80s, the wizardry and, and Ultima kind of games that are, you know, get the character, build the party, explore the wilderness, find the stuff, enter the dungeon, beat the boss, get the again. treasure, forge the items, go to the next town, do it again. Yeah. And all, and it's so, they have this down to such an art form mm, now. Mm, mm. I mean, after doing this for a long time, this is a great entry point for the series for people that have never yeah. played. Okay, how's um, the story? It's not so great. Uh, it's fine. It, it, it uh, The earlier parts in particular are kind of weaker. You are the hero of legend. And boy, they are... Let me tell you what, you are the hero of legend. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to remind you yes, at every turn. You are the hero of legend, and don't you forget it. Um, so you're kind of a blank slate, and that's very deliberate. Actually, they kind of make some jokes about the fact that you're the silent protagonist. Oh, yeah. it's, it's very, uh, and that is a deliberate, I love Dragon Quest games. I've played quite a few of them. This is a, uh, a throwback, really, to the first Dragon Quest and the first three mm. Dragon Quests, especially. And so you get a lot of that playing. Your party members are fine. Their personalities are kind of, they are very tropish. And you kind of, you see most of the surprises coming. Mechanically, they're really interesting. Your characters mm. are all very different when it comes to getting down to what they can do. They all feel great. They're customizable, but not too customizable. You can you can tech them out the way you like, but they but it's not like Materia in Final Fantasy VII where you can make them anything you want. They're still going to feel like them. So they have a unique feel to, to all the main characters, but you can tweak them the way you like with gear and skills and stuff like that. Some of the stories are downright silly. Uh, there, there's one in particular that, that comes to mind where it's just like, I'm, they're almost eye rolling, cringy. Like, really, you're yeah. saving the orphans so that you can not orphans. take the steroids Fuck because the that's bad. But the second half of the game story gets better, much better. Okay. Uh, and the post game story is downright intriguing because unlike the rest of the game, it seems like an honest to goodness mystery. I'm still in the post game, mm. and it's a big old post game. That's um, awesome. That's and it's great. a story driven post game. Yeah. Uh, and so there's that's cool. There's something going on where I'm like, I still don't quite know what's happening, but I like it. Cool. Uh, that's a start. I want. What else you want to know about it? Um, is it worth playing for people that? haven't played a Dragon Quest game before and maybe don't maybe let's say Octopath Traveler was the first JRPG they've played in a while. This will be very different. Um, it's pure turn based combat and some people immediately turn off their brains when they hear that and they're like, no, no, none of that. There are, you know, there are no action oriented elements in the fight chase. You can move your characters around. It has literally no tactical effect at all. It's purely aesthetic. But the combat is still, and I say this in my review, nail biting. Not the everyday encounters where you bump into a guy and you're farming stuff. Those are over in 30 seconds, just like you want them to be. Yeah. Except when you occasionally run into a surprise, get in trouble, and they're like, oh, crap. But they're all unique. They're still interesting. It's not just I hit the monster and that's that, because every monster in the monsters are gorgeous, and there are hundreds of them. Hundreds of unique monsters, all with different abilities. All you have to approach a different way. It's almost like little mini puzzles when you're fighting them in battle, and yet they all happen quickly. But then you, when you get into a trouble situation and those pop up pretty, it's like, Ugh! I mean, you're one turn away from death. Mm, you yeah. know, you're like, I got to make. So you're sitting there. You're like, what do I do? Do I switch my party? Because you can switch party members. Do I switch them out because this guy would be better for this? Or maybe if I can, if I wait one more turn, my guy will get his pet power. And then I could do a Chrono Trigger style three person combo that might bail me out of this. But if I take the same thing, but if I heal that guy to, and you're doing and it's. And you got all the time in the world to think, but you're kind of. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. It's great. It's absolutely great that way. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is, even if you played Octopath, this is different enough. I, find the treasure, hunt in every corner, break every barrel, peek behind every building, go down every path you see on the side. Build your stuff. Get in, When you start the forging game, you're going to be like, what's this forging? This is lame. And then hours later, when you have like, 12 unique forging powers for these super complicated template mini games where you're just like, 
even that turns tense. You're like, I'm going to waste my items, but I'm so close. Do I keep trying to make it perfect or do I get, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about being ready. It's about building up. It's about tweaking the perfect party for the situation you're in. And it's about if you make a mistake and it's very forgiving. If you make a mistake, go back, try again a different way. Mm -hmm. And I like that about it. It's very, uh, uh, so in addition to reviewing it, I, I had the opportunity to interview Mr. Hori, uh, the creator of all the Dragon Quest games from one guy. Okay, he's been making video games since he programmed uh, a tennis game for a Japanese computer in the early 80s. He made Portopia, which is the game that uh, Hideo Kojima calls one of his biggest inspirations and hid in the Metal Gear 5 source code. Um, <laughs> and he's made all 11 Dragon Quests. And Hori's still in charge, and he's just delightful, mischievous guy. Uh, I got to, and there's an interview on IGN right now. It just went up today uh, on Wednesday about that. Cool. And check he, it out. Yeah, talking about. But he said <laughs> it's a friendly game. He said, you know, these games are friendly. friendly little games. It's true. The good. slimes yeah, are adorable. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, and it's. And he, but he wasn't just talking about the adorableness. Oh, the monsters. They look so good in HD. They really do. Yeah. But uh, and they have incredible animations. Um, but he points out that if you keep trying, you're going to make it. There's, you know, you literally can if you have to it's power through. It's a good slogan through. for life, yeah, but it's not grindy. Yeah. Yeah. Trying. He You're also said, I, I, my favorite thing of all was the, the very last question of the interview. I, I asked, you know, I was just like, are games magic? And he like leans back there and kind of go, and he's just like in Japanese. Yeah. Sure, games are magic. <laughs> you know, I was just like, yeah, I like that guy. He's, he's awesome. Video games are magic. Yeah. They are, too. Greg Miller? Yeah. You've been playing a little magical video game called Valkyria Chronicles I have. Four. Yeah, I have it on good authority. We're going to have the ability to play more soon. So I finally did what I've been talking about doing forever, which is take Octopath and say, I'm sorry. We're done. I, no, we're not done. I will oh, get back to you, you Octopath. But it's like, demo time, baby. I got to jump into the, Val yeah, the Valkyria Chronicles 4. Of course, your demos, it goes, what, through the end of Chapter 2 and like your progress carries over and all that jazz. So it was like, all right, it's time to get serious. Let's get in there. Let's get a save. Hopefully get Valkyria soon and be able to just keep going, right? And so, yeah, it took over my Switch, and I'm so goddamn happy it did because yeah. uh, we talk about it all the time, you and me, Jared, how much I love Valkyria and how excited I am for more Valkyria. And so to get back into this and relearn what I forgot to be reminded of things that I had totally forgotten about. I had totally forgotten about like leveling up your troops, you know what I mean? Oh. Like coming back out and going into your camp and applying the XP you've earned to okay. make your shock troopers better, to make kind your scouts important. better. I know, right? But it's not, <laughs> it's not that I forgot. It's just like when I think yeah. of it, I think of the battles and I think of the cutscenes, right. and I'm like, I would, I, you forget the moment to moment how everything changed and where it goes, let alone now like talking to people in the mess hall to get new things, to get new uh, you know yeah. options and things the like that. The kind of persona-ish light Right, yeah, of what's happening in, in the world right? and the flashbacks to who these guys were before the war and what their relationships are and you know the introductions of characters you know how in like you know you're playing as Claude for, or getting from his perspective but you know the introduction of you know this this Miller that shows up this this woman named Miller who shows up and like there's clearly oh, something there Miller. and it's like wait what is it about and like trying to figure out like I think they're good at actually giving me a hook of like wow she hit him why is she mad at him like what's going on and then like have to go on a little bit to find out what's going on and what his relationship is with his subordinate it, who's acting like is an she Andrea or Renee? No, Andrew Renee is Minerva. Okay. Have you seen this? No, I have the not sub, seen that. The kind of funny subreddit, it, obviously the demo's out, you can play it right now, and like there's a character in it named Minerva, okay. Minerva, who has red hair and these like black rim glasses, and like they put a side by and side of this one photo face, of Andrew though. Renee. When I miss this, and it was the like, pretty often. Huh. Fuck yeah, that totally does look yeah. like Andrea. Yeah, great. wow. I so it's that. just been fun to get back into it and start putting your R and D in and like making yeah. better weapons for everybody and seeing it. And then you know, similar to what you're talking about with like the the combat, right? And the, it, it's yeah, you know, I'm running over there. I can sit there and sit there and survey the battlefield and then make my moves. And then when it doesn't go right or they do something I'm not expecting or this that the other be like all right cool quit out restart like I'm not yeah, that's not how this like, is going yeah, you know what I mean like I, back all the way I want to fucking over. not perfect be perfect but I want to make sure I'm yeah. doing this the way it's supposed to be and I'll make a stupid move or do something stupid you gotta love it about those type of games sure because, like it really does give you that feeling of like oh, man I can do this better when I, I end and a I'm mission and on. I get a B it's like ah oh, motherfucker we no. need to create a world where the two of you just switch you play Valkyria and you play Fire Emblem and you're both really happy sure that needs 
to happen. I mean, it's just or you just both play into the breach and get the same experience somehow distilled <laughs> down into like a, like an eight by eight a grid. Little grid. Yeah, 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 I can't yeah, figure yeah. out how that that. Get, speaking of great things on Switch, holy yeah, crap! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shadow drop, out, shadow t- drop today on Switch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. playing it on Steam and it's it's rad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, Valkyrie is great. I can't wait to get deeper into it. I will get back to Octopath. Like mm-hmm. Octopath, I mean, like the Switch is is. I mean, in the last few months, my primary console, right, in terms of, like, when it was Fortnite and Octopath, and now Valkyria, I do see when Valkyria's done coming back. Let me ask you a real question. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to put you on a spot. Sure. This is the real thing. If Atlas was like, we're doing Persona 5 Crimson or whatever on the Switch, would you beat it? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah? I I mean, here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. Is the whole reason I get back? Why do you laugh like not even the devil? You laugh like a little goblin. <laughs> you're like you're fucking running around David Bowie's knees right now. <laughs> Somebody photoshopped that one. Uh, uh, no, I would because the thing that's the whole thing with Octopath, where I legitimately will get back to it because Octopath's great in the way uh, it's it's the opposite of Catherine. Where when I put Catherine down on PS3 and tried to come back to Catherine, I was like. Fuck, what is going on? Where Octopath is yeah. such, it's so easy to digest. It's so eh, cool. It's a JRPG. The stories are re explained. That's not the concern. It's not, there's no gameplay mechanic in this. Just like in Persona, where I come back and I'm like, wait, what the fuck am I doing? How do you fight in these games? I know how to fight in a, a turn based RPG, right? And so when I'm done with Valkyria, I'm the first top of the list is to go back to Octopath, unless there's something else I need to play yeah. on Switch at the time. But for as much as we travel, like that's the whole point of why this Switch is amazing and why it's been getting so much playtime. Was- it's not getting playtime because I'm abandoned in my PlayStation, it's because I'm on the road and there's so many great games there. Right now, the thing that I'm jonesing for when I'm on the plane playing with it is like, I wish Fire Pro fucking Wrestling World was on this right, on the uh, Switch. Because I love Fire Pro on PS4. It's so great. Yeah. The okay. creations are so good. Everything's going well. What what happened? Why are you on it, Kev? Okay. What? Can we time code this for Fire Pro? Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. I didn't We're know. I was making the transition. Right That's fine. And it was just the thing of like, I have such a good time with that game that I wish it was here. You know what I mean? I, I, mm. I Don't get me wrong. I love... We've talked about this before, where the PlayStation for me is the I'm sitting down, I'm playing this HD AAA, whatever the fuck you want to call it, game, right? That's it's like why I'm excited for Spider Man, right? Reviews up next week, everybody. Or if you're watching this, is up Tuesday, seven a.m. I guess no matter when you're watching it, Tuesday, seven a.m. Uh, we're playing, you know, Spider Man. So I'm gonna be in this thing for hours on end. It's a Dragon Quest. I mean, you know, these, these yeah. things are like I'm excited for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, or Red Dead, or all that kind of thing, right? Fire Pro walks this interesting line of. Fire Pro looks like a very nice SNES game, and that's great, yeah. and it's awesome, and amazing, and I would love to have it on Switch, so it's just there when I, wherever I am, and ready yeah. to go. Yeah. Do you think we could get Suda in here because he's got a huge spot in his heart for Fire Pro? He wrote one of sure. the earliest Fire Pro scenarios. It's still wor- it's really close to his heart. Do we get him in here to play Fire Pro? That'd be amazing. Sure. What's the he, what's his game he's working on right now? There's a game he they're, uh, they're Brain in, Dead. I, I don't remember. I I was talking to dead. somebody about it of like yeah when he's through here I want him on for the stuff, sequel yeah. to Killer Seven Killer Eight. There you go, Killer Eight. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just no more heroes right now. Great. Is he working on that? Yeah, mm-hmm. Travis Strikes again. Yeah, Travis Strikes you again. You talking about Studio 51? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's on. He's Travis probably no more heroes. All right, cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, then, yeah, I've been working on it in progress. Uh, Valkyria, great. Can't wait to play more of it. Yes, uh, I would. If Persona was there, it'd be the exact same thing of, wow, perfect. It's why. I got so lost into Persona 4 Golden, right? Mm-hmm. And why so many people did. I'm like, great, it's there when I need it and in burst and turn it on, turn it off. Whereas, like, I just don't want to do that when I'm at home for some reason on my P- my P- PS4. So it's, then, Fire Pro Wrestling. Fire Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, a game that never... It didn't click with me the one time it pa- crossed paths with me. I... Always, reg- I always wanted to be the Game Boy Advance uh, gener- launch generation. Remember when that came and it had a Fire Pro on it mm-hmm. and it had all these different things? Yeah. I was getting ready to go to school uh, at Mizzou, and I remember just not being able to justify it with my money and not mm-hmm. wanting to ask for it for a gift, so I never did. And I'll never forget EGM having all these awesome photos what with it. What a fucking launch lineup, man. Right? Shout out to the GBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GBA was, that, that thing was dope. And so I yeah. never, I, I missed it there. And of course, as every, everybody who watches this, I'm sure knows, like, I was Mr. Wrestling fucking video game guy, right? Like, that's what it was all about. I mean, when No Mercy and WrestleMania 2000 came out, I fucking took the days off school. You know what I mean? Friendships you- in college were built on... I left my room once in the first week of Mizzou and heard the SmackDown PS1 menu music and ran room to room till I find, found John and, like, we became friends. Did you import Sick Man's Scramble back in the day? What I... I, I imported, and I, I'm so rusty on it, and I, I imported... It wasn't a Fire Pro. Okay. But it was one that was... Lost 
lauded on N64 as being amazing, and I mm. imported it and printed off the giant guide, and I'm so bad at I don't remember the name of it, but I remember the biggest thing was there there was a dude and he could green mist on people, and I like spent I'm like fucking reading these translations trying to figure out how to do it. I had to go in and unscrew the things in my my uh, N64 to be able to so put the, the import whole, games. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. And I got an email back from EGM about it because I wrote in and I'm like I there was I ordered it. Went through all my EGMs because I remember reading one of them where they said how to do it and I could not find it. And I had to hit them on like, where is it? And it turned out it was like the magazine before my collection began. It was like oh, something stupid and ridiculous. Awful. But they told That's me hilarious. how to do it. Um, anyways, I was always Mr. Wrestling, guys. Went to IGN, reviewed all the wrestling games there. And Fire Pro came to PS2 while I was there mm-hmm. and got it and had no real context for it. And it wasn't what I wanted if that makes sense at the time mm-hmm. at that time it still was cool that the THQ WWE series was looking more and more like product like mm-hmm. it was looking like we were watching TV right yeah. whereas now I think that's actually a huge detriment to the mm-hmm. brand that's Absolutely. been around for too long where it's like we are too hung up on making everything look photorealistic we are too hung up on the moves being like hey we want these animations that go on for everyone it's like why well, we want it in the, the comp the systems are too complicated but right now as I say all the time on these shows right rubber band it back stop what you're doing just put a small team together to make a no mercy clone for lack of a better term make that system again put that out as a downloadable game it will sell better i think than you would than you'd possibly believe especially if it's on switch i actually believe you could probably inject the entire wwe with that philosophy and all their product right now when it would be an improvement (laughs) yeah but it's just like hey make that game that was so simple to master everyone who had n64 has a good memory of playing those wrestling games because it was strong gap or weak grapple strong strike weak grip or strike got it cool understand jiggle the stick to pull pull my special yeah great and that's what fire pro basically is yeah. You know, they're, 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 when I got it, the Fire Pro uh, World here, and I popped it in, I was so excited. Uh, they have a tutorial in it that I don't remember the PS2 one having when I reviewed it. So, like, and I don't know if maybe I'm just rusty on that, which is very possible. But going through and, like, getting it, even then I had to go and read a forum of, like, what am I doing wrong? Why? Oh, when I so like when you go for the collar and elbow and mm-hmm. the foot hits the ground, right, that's when you put in your button command, yeah. and that's whoever gets it first that caught. And it was like, Okay, and once I got that to click in yeah. my head with this version, it was like, now we're off to the races. Now I get what to do. It's just, again, coming from the current WWE yeah. games that are not button mash, but hit a whole bunch of shit to this one where it's like, you're making choices of what you're yeah. doing. You hit the button to make a choice. Don't fucking button tap. You're not going to get anything right. They're going to fucking clean your clock. Yeah. I jumped in and started to get the feeling for it. I love it. I love the controls. I love the systems in play. The detriment I had having it early was the fact that since it wasn't out in the U.S., there weren't many U.S. creations getting uploaded, right? right. When I look at Fire Pro uh, World, obviously been on PC forever in yeah. early access, or no, just out in early access. Uh, it's been on, you can play on a PC. I bought it on PC, never even turned it on. But I was super stoked, put my money where my mouth is, I want to play this game. Uh, the creations people have made, right? When you look at this, like, the on the fire, you, Tim's a, a test if I actually care a lot about a game. I, of course, immediately signed up for the subreddit. Yeah. And the subreddit's full of like montages of people who have made Raw is War and are having the Attitude Era fights. And I'm watching Shawn Michaels super kick the Undertaker. And I'm like, That's awesome. this is what I want, but it's not on PlayStation yet. This game just dropped on PlayStation Tuesday. So now we're starting to see the influx. I had seen through, I can still use the when it was pre, uh, pre-released for, me, for everybody. And I was playing, I could still upload, I could still build, and I could also bring down the Japanese creations or creations other Americans had uploaded. They couldn't make wrestlers yet, but I have the the ECW fucking ring apron mm-hmm. and all the turnbuckle pads. I made the party mode ring. And that's the thing is like there was a weekend when you were playing this and you were just uploading everything you're doing. Yeah. I was blown away by how good it looks yeah. because yeah. it's like you, it has that S- SNES aesthetic, but yeah. it's so HD and pretty yeah. looking yeah. that I was blown away by the custom like when you made the party mode ring, the quality of the ring is it's insane. It's yeah. insane. Dude, it like great. that and that's the thing about it where I was playing it that weekend and Jen's watching me similar to when Jared saw me play luminous and fl- fucking just be so happy. Jen's watching me regress to being a sophomore in high school playing N64 to, yeah. for hours on end, just doing it. Cause it's the whole thing. I'm just playing matches and building the story in my head of what's happening. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting there ex- yeah. explaining the feud and why we're doing and what the pay-per-view is. And Great. and like, it was you're, literally you're playing the Sims with wrestlers totally. And it was the <laughs> thing of like, 
I, you know, it was like, all right, it's time for bed or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not really tired. I'll just do some work in bed. And what work was is building the rings and making graphics work. and doing the stuff and <laughs> uploading to the site. But you know what Love you it. didn't take time for, Greg Miller? What's that? The part timers. I know, I know. Still. I know. What? No. What, what, so what is this crap? As you know, as I've just said here, Jared, we're on a very tight travel schedule. So like I had my Fire Pro weekend before launch and now it'll be the Fire Pro life when we come back because now we got packs or whatever. I, I, just, know where, I just know life. where I fall in the pecking order and, no, that, well, and I, I fall mean, about a month but, behind. But That's here's it. the thing is like, oh, I made, I, if it makes you feel any better, nobody has custom move sets yet. I just made all the <laughs> kind of funny seven. <laughs> no, in like, it doesn't make me feel any fun. better. You'll be the first part timer I make then. All right. But I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to see what other people have created. I can't wait to yeah. do a party mode with everybody. I can't wait just to download all the WWE superstars that I grew up with. I'm talking about attitude era people, yeah. right? And put them in there. Cause like they have like all fucking Scotty two hotties moves. They have the worm in there. Like you watch these kids, yeah. what they've made on the so subreddit. Rad. It's like, this is what I want. I want no mercy again, but since I can't get it, this is what it is. And that's what I want. That's beautiful. Baller. Yeah. yeah. Greg. Yeah. I want you to tell me about one more of these games before sure. we move on to your Superman. Pitch. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have one? that you feel like we want to get it done this I, week, the rest done next week. I mean, the one right now that I, I want to say, like, I want to talk about with my big dog, Kevin Coelho, <laughs> fire wall, mm. zero hours. No, what is it? Fire wall, wow, zero hour. It just doesn't sound right when I say it yeah. for some reason. PSVR game. PlayStation VR game. Uh, I don't think... And Kevin, you, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm I don't saying. think I'm exaggerating when I say this is the current PlayStation VR killer app. Whoa. Holy I think shit, it's even better than Moss. I think, right. it, I think he's right. I think he's right. I think it competes with Super Hot, which had the honor beforehand. It's somebody who likes PlayStation VR and did the show. Different games, though. I just want to be clear. 100% like, different, different games. games. 100% different games. But just imagine me last night. And I, and it was it, we, t uh, we talk about video games and entertainment and excitement astonishment are they magic yeah last night was magic it wow. was me in uh, in vr with my aim controller the plastic gun you know what i mean sharpshooter they call it a name this generation it's aim the playstation aim controller or whatever oh it's not the sharpshooter no that was last generation mm. uh with kevin butler and all that jazz anyways though it's me in vr in this aim thing on a team with Kevin and two other kind of funny best friends. And we are just in a lobby that keeps cycling us into another lobby to fight other uh, four other people. Right. And we did it for a while. The same opposing four, just four V four rainbow six Vegas for lack of a better term, just mm. to put you in there in VR and it all works. And I'm talking to Kevin and it works and I'm making video clips and editing them and uploading Were and you it works in the same room. Yeah. What do you mean? You're in the same room together talking to each no, other? No, uh, he's in his garage. I'm in my house. Sorry, but you yeah. can see each other. You're looking over. The I area. look over at Kevin and the other two kind of funny best friends there and everything they're doing with awesome. their gun is happening. They're customizing their character. I'm seeing it switch out. Uh, and then we jump in there and it is like, cool. And it, like, yeah, at one point Kevin says, it was laughing. He's like, it's just like the commercial. Because it is of like, oh, fuck, they're coming out the front door. All right, I tossed down flashmans. All right, and like, Kevin and I are playing with people who are way better than us. So we're, so, like, yeah. we're like, I don't know what to do. Should I use a shotgun? But it's like, it is this thing of like, oh, fuck, they're there. Brrr, and like getting up against the wall. Like, I need to heal. I'm tossing on the back. And da, 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 da. I'm like, all right, we put prox mines up here. And, da, da, da. and it's like, oh, oh, I hit level four. I can go customize this and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's just that amazement of, and what we've struggled with with VR, of playing a game that feels like, all right, cool. Yeah. All right, cool. This is what is going to continue to happen. This is, and it's because you're going to play and it's like, oh, the graphics aren't that sharp or this, that, or the other. And like, for some reason, aiming down the sights with, like, you know, it's for some reason, technology and the limitations of it, I'm sure. But like aiming down sights, I have to like move it a little bit like this. Mm. So like, I'm, yeah. if that makes sense, where yeah. in real life, I'm aiming a bit to the right, but on the screen that I'm looking straight yeah. down where I'm like, that feels weird. It all, and that's the thing of, it feels weird when we're in the lobby, when I'm like, I look down at the aim controller and I go to put my hand on the PlayStation button and I don't see my thumb on the uh, controller, but I'm yeah. like, it's all and there yeah. and it all makes sense. How how do you move in the game? Is it Sticks. one of those? So, oh, go ahead, real, real quick. Um, am I, I'm not wrong about it. I'm not overhyping this. Am no, I no, no, oh, no. By things. the way, hashtag game provided by the PlayStation. They sent us this. Yeah, that's true. Um, Everybody sends all their I, games to us. I, uh, but PlayStation I makes the say for FTC rules. I did an Instagram story where like I took a picture, like a video of the like downloading it. Yeah. And uh, somebody hit me up and was like, oh, what are you playing? And I was like, Firewall. And they're like, well, what do you think? And it's like, this is 
what I had hoped the future of gaming mm. was going to be. Yeah, when they talk about yeah, VR, yeah. right? This is what you mm -hmm. hope. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So up till now, the most yeah. impressive realizations of VR I've seen have actually been third-person games. They were not games where I was seeing out of sure. my eyes yeah, yeah, yeah. and looked at first person. I'd played plenty of those. Most of them didn't impress very much. Yeah. But things that went into the third person have been very impressive, especially in single player. However, what I haven't done is played anything really cooperative like this. Yeah, me so neither. So is it that... Is it that you know, obviously there was interest from Facebook and stuff on like the future of being able to sit in a room with somebody else and communicate in VR and that being a thing. Is it just that element of Kevin being there? Is that what's making the difference? Not as an enemy, but as an ally? Is it having being able to socialize in a virtual space kind of fill in the fun factor? I mean, in your for brain? me, I think it's 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 all that it works. And I know that sounds weird and like a low bar, but think of it this way. And I was talking to them about it last night. It's the fact that I'm upgrading my menus. I'm changing things out. All right, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for them to ready up and I'm turning and I'm, I'm talking to Kevin. I'm turning in this video game fake space and looking at Kevin's character to talk to Kevin. And, it, and I said it like, right. Of like, I don't know why I keep turning to you guys as if you are like actually like right there, but it, it does it feel feels, that way. It feels right. Yeah. yeah, totally. I was also doing the thing. I was a little frustrated because my care, like the character on my right, I know that he like turns the opposite direction. So, he wasn't looking at you yeah, guys, yeah. but I was. Every time I was talking to you guys, yeah. I was looking at you guys. And, well, and the other thing I was, when I was playing it and feeling it, it was that wonder, that wondrous experience of playing a, a, something new and being like, I f I'm in my house. This feels like an experience yeah. I would go, like when they talk about the void, that I would go play it at the mall or I would yeah. go play it at an arcade where it's like, I shouldn't be able to get this quality i shouldn't be able to get this experience at my house right. but i was and it was all there and it was going the way it should you grew up near chicago like yeah. some of the time right do you ever go to battletech center back when that was like a thing no i okay. was i was on the burp so i was doing like enchanted castle and galaxy zone stuff and all like those that kind of okay yeah. i wondered about that real quick uh i just wanted to go back to the uh please do the motion like the yeah oh yeah because tim asked yeah, about yeah, controls yeah. and then ran away um like a coward initially when i did the tutorial right yeah and i didn't like it the controls felt really clunky and it's one of those things where like you use the right analog stick to do the quarter turns. Yeah, you do quarter turns. Uh, and then hold down L3 to run, right? Um, it didn't feel right, but once you start playing, it it just fits Clicks. perfectly. And see, that's the it thing is I had so the good. I had yeah. the opposite experience where Kevin had been playing for a while. I was finishing up Donut County, platinumed it. Great game, really fun, funny too. Uh, I, when I jumped in, he was I was like, oh, let's just go. And so it was. And I granted, I played it at preview events. That's why this was on my radar and all these different things. But it was like. Yep, this is natural. This is fine. And then it's even the moment of like, again, we've played games with sticks so long and so quarter turning, right? So I don't get, you know, uh, I don't turn my back to the TV yeah. or whatever. But then it, it is that moment of even after a few, maybe hours, but maybe more like 10 or, you know, 30 minutes or whatever of it, remembering that like, all oh, right, I can exist in the space without having to quarter turn. If I just mm -hmm. want to peek around the corner, if I just want to look over, if I just want to do this, I can move yeah. myself around too. Bad. It's it, it, Sounds it, amazing. It, it's amazing. It was a lot of fun. Kevin signed off to, to go hang out with his wife, like a smart guy. Uh, and it was like that. I was like, that's cool. I'm like, I don't feel like playing anymore. And then I woke up this morning. I'm like, fuck. I, I, I started Gotta downloading at the in. desk. I'm like, if I have a couple minutes, I'd love to get back in. And like tonight, Kevin, I'd love to play more. I so would I'm, love I'm, to. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm booked through packs, but you sold me. We got to play this together. Do you have a VR unit home? When I get back. So we will make this happen. Okay, great. Yeah, I'd, I, I'd love to get a full squad of us. I mean, I'm going to keep Hell, tweeting yeah. out. If you have PlayStation VR and you have a, a, a firewall, for sure, we're going to do be some stuff ready. with it there. Yeah. Be and ready. Of course, hashtag game provided by PlayStation. Time. Any day. Kevin, awesome. put put time codes all over this because you have to put up that bar, I think. Well, put it the front and the back. No, when we talk about it, game provided by PlayStation. I do got to warn you, though. Yeah. Uh, I am... Uh, I, I'm really bad at video games. That's what we've proven at the kind of funny inner website tourney. Sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. Packs. For the Pear Schneider. Yeah, with the Pear Schneider oh, Cup. Mm -hmm. I'm bad at video games, so I will weigh you down. Oh, don't worry. We're, it, 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 we've never played it to be good. We play it to have fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I famously, every single game was the first one to die. by like Kevin's like, I'm not signing off till I get a kill. <laughs> and he's like, fuck it, I'm signing off. <laughs> Three or four matches later. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Cast is brought to you by Blue Apron. You probably know this already. Oh, wait, well, go for it, Greg. What do you got for me? I was just going to mm, mm, mm. I was going to oh, say. Oh, okay. Just saying, but uh, you looked, real you looked good. like you were like clearing your throat. Oh, no. Oh, oh, okay. No, no, no like, I'm sorry. I was like, mm, nom, 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 nom. Is that better? Um, nom, nom, nom. Okay, okay, I thought it was nom, like a Marge nom. Simpson, like, mm. Okay, so it's was Marge. Homer. So you're like. All right, back now. Let him do the end. Blue yeah. Apron <laughs> delivers farm fresh ingredients and step-by-step -step recipes to your door. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone, including Greg Miller. Uh, he's really good at that. Uh, how it works? It's simple. You choose chef-designed recipes. They deliver fresh, seasonally-inspired ingredients. You get to cook in incredible meals in as little as 20 minutes. 
Now, let me tell you, 20 minutes, not that long. All right. You can watch a sitcom. And in the time that sitcom ends, I'm talking without even commercials. Well, I'm talking like Netflix style, Hulu style. Damn. You watch one of these things, you can have a blue apron meal cook. That's so fast. It's so fast. That's pretty quick. Uh, it's quick, easy recipe options with insanely delicious flavors. Greg, are those flavors delicious? You know they are. I love Blue Apron. Mm -hmm. I cook with it. How much you love it? I love it all. I mean, I bought the cookbook. That's how much I love it. Oh. Where I'm just like, out. Oh. And I have that big binder full of recipes, of course, mm -hmm. from my years of Blue Apron patronage <laughs> that I use often where I'm like, I want to do my wings this way or the potato wedges this way. And I go find that recipe and use it. Uh, you can skip meal planning and shopping and get straight to cooking with Blue Apron, whether you're looking for a quick and easy meal or full culinary cooking experience. I'm a big fan of that. Blue Apron is here. Alliteration gets you. Uh, chef Design Recipes and exciting September partnerships like Bob Burgers Inspired and Whole30 Approved. Okay. Chrissy Teigen did some stuff too. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. big old Chrissy Teigen. Uh, we made her, um, ah, oh, shit. Uh, bon Korean food. She, she put some Korean recipes bon in there. We used. Thank you. That's it. Ah. Yes. I could not pronounce that. Little sandwiches. They were delicious. Mm. So check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free at blueapron.com slash gamescast. That's blueapron.com slash gamescast to get your first three meals free. Blue Apron. A better way to cook. Yeah, it is. Oh, man. Always my favorite part of the room. Yummy. Greg. Yeah, buddy. This weekend. Right. Well, this weekend, if you're watching live or Patreon, early supporter at the $10. It's PAX. $5. Blah, 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 blah. It's PAX. They get it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, or PAX just happened. Uh, you guys are doing a panel. <laughs> That's right. With Corey Barlog uh -huh. and Kat mm -hmm. Bailey. Correct. Mm -hmm. And Sydney, Sydney and Goodman. Sydney Goodman. Mm -hmm. Sydney Rubens now? I don't know how that works. Uh, talking about... Superman. That's right. Superman. Jared had this idea for this panel. Mm -hmm. What is this panel, Jared? Oh, Superman is uh, is somebody that's been treated very well in most forms of entertainment. He's had his good movies and his bad ones, but yeah. he's had some good ones. He's had his wonderful comic stories. Yeah. But in he's video had games, plenty of bad comic stories. Yeah, too. he's had bad ones too. But he's he's gotten he's gotten his good moments in most media. Yeah. Even television, he's had yeah, good yeah. moments. <laughs> yeah. Lois and Clark, yeah, come absolutely. on. Absolutely. But Superman not so well treated in video games. Sure. Why? Yeah. That's what we're going to be talking about. So first. Why haven't Superman games worked so far? Second, each member of the panel given us the elevator pitch mm -hmm. on their perfect Superman game. And that's where this games cast enters the fray, Tim Geddes. As you know, for a long, <laughs> long, long time, Very I've long. said that I have an idea for a Superman game and I want to make it into a video one day, right? Mm -hmm. And I just never have. Because mm -hmm. guess what? The day-to-day -day work around here. Life's hard. Exactly. And I want to do other crazy projects. Right. And, and I want to do it right yeah. and stuff. But when Jared came to me with this idea for the panel, I was like, I can't not be Should on this panel. Off the right. I'm fucking Greg Miller, Mr. Superman video game guy. I cannot not be there. And so rather than let the panel debut the elevator pitch and all that stuff, I thought I would come here and talk you about You owe my it to the people. I yeah. owe it to you, kind of funny best friends, because I've done it so long. So... Where I'd like to take you guys is just, I'd like to step back in time just a little yeah. bit, all right? Okay. Do We're, I need to close my eyes or is that optional? You don't need to close your <laughs> eyes. We're just going to go to October 24th, 2013. Okay. So how many years ago is that, Jared? That is five years ago. Five years ago when I wrote this document and began my idea for what it would be. And, it's, and this is a script I was originally writing for IGN.com that wow. I am now stealing and just using as our own nope, thing. Nope. Love it. I'm sick of defending Superman. Every time the guy comes up, a hater will roll his eyes and say, he's boring. If he can do everything, where's the challenge? I don't blame these people, but I can talk about magic and the internal conflict of between Clark and Kal-El until I'm blue in the face. And all they'll remember is Christopher Reeve rewinding time and that Superman is a god. It's this belief that has led to so many terrible Superman games. If he can do anything, which he can't, what's the game going to be about? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Folks say Superman can't make for an interesting game and then he doesn't. It's a load of crap, and if no one else is willing to pen a design doc for the definitive Superman game, I, I will. will. And the doc goes on like this for quite a while, but of course, I'm just going to talk. We're talking mm -hmm. here, and I want, your, I want you guys to input on it, you know okay. what I mean? One day, maybe I still make something crazy about mm -hmm. this and do it in a different thing. Right now, we're in the brain tr brainstorming tree, the tree right, of trust. The brainstorm tree. All right, here we go. Um, so my Superman uh, game, my Superman pitch, of course, I think for me starts with two things it's adaptation and then it's piggybacking off something everybody knows i feel that Bar batman arkham asylum did this incredibly well where it was guess what everybody we're taking the cast of batman the animated series for all intents and purposes mm -hmm. and giving a story that loosely could be a sequel they were very much in the beginning could be and then it eventually became its own thing but it was in the mm -hmm. beginning just imagine it is who do you care you know all these characters you know all this stuff go for it right we're gonna drop you in with what you already know right 
that's a big part of mine. And then I think there's there are so many great Superman stories out there that people can use as templates. And I know so many people want to do crazy stuff. Like they talk about the DC movies of the spinoffs of like, cool, let's do Red Sun. You know what I mean? Let's give you something completely different. An amazing story that everybody loves. Let's jump off there. Death and Return of Superman. That's Mm -hmm. been done a lot. Blah, blah, blah. There's a story of Superman that I talk about all the time in terms of what I recommend you read that I think doesn't get the credit it deserves. And even though it's got its foibles and problems as a comic book, but as a game would excel on so many different fucking Mm -hmm. levels. And that one, of course, is Superman Last Son. Uh, Superman Last Last Son, I brought it in here, of course. It's one of my favorite books. I recommend you guys read it all the time. Uh, It's Jeff Johns and Richard Donner as the writing team about it. That's really what I mean. The art by Adam is amazing stuff. But uh, of course, Jeff Johns, I don't think I need to explain for most people, but rose the ladder really quickly at DC wrote so many great Green Lantern things went over to the movie division now he's spinning off and doing his own thing but he's done so much awesome comic book writing Mm -hmm. Richard Donner of course the director of Superman the movie and for some of Superman too yeah (laughs) whole thing why he has his own Donner cut of that and stuff like that right when they sat down to make this book it was very much that it happens in current continuity but it kind of plays with it in two of like reintroducing General Zod and Ursa yeah. and Non and all these people from the movie movies where it's like, again, OK, it could be in continuity of the current Superman story. Lois and Clark are married. It could also be its own little sequel to mm-hmm. the movie. It could be another. It could be Richard Donner. It is Superman a Superman story. story. Exactly. Ubiquitous. And you can jump in. Yeah. And for me personally. That's the best blueprint we'll follow for this. So if you haven't ever read it, go because today we're going to move quickly. My elevator pitch will move even quicker for me. And as I've talked about at length, and I'm sure people have seen it on Game Over Greg's show or Greg's comic book club, patreon.com slash kind of funny. Superman is a human. Superman is American. Superman is, of course, from the planet Krypton. He is an alien in our world, all this stuff. But he identifies as one of us. He is a person like us. This book wrestles with that in such a great way, where, again, he goes to the fortress. The theme of him being Kryptonian is in there very much, but it's also the incredibly human trait of wanting to protect a child. It is the incredibly human trait of he can't have a woman or he can't have a child with the woman he loves. These are all themes that are wrestled with in this story, right? I want to piggyback off that and I want to give you uh, an interpretation of that and I want to do give you a place mm-hmm. to jump off from that the fans will do will be behind as well. That's why for my Superman pitch for my Superman game for my Superman universe we are doing the same thing they did with Arkham Asylum but we're using Smallville and what we're doing is Tom Welling is Superman uh, Erica Durant is Lois Michael Rosenbaum is Lex it's it, for me personally it's one of the best ways. Uh, Rosenbaum and uh, uh, Tom Welling did a, a panel not too long ago where someone in the audience and they started spitballing about doing an animated series of Smallville, right? Mm-hmm. Same idea where Tom Welling doesn't have to stay jacked all the time and be worried about being shirtless <laughs> next week, nor does it matter that they've aged up. They can still do yeah. the voices. And I want to use that as you're jumping off. Because again, in my personal opinion, in my lifetime, Smallville is the best interpretation of Superman live action. Yes, Smallville is 100 episodes, and I would say the overwhelming majority of those episodes are garbage. But the ones where they get it right, the relationship between Clark and Lois, the way they are partners, the way they love each other and uh, rely on each other, the way Lex is in that universe, Mm -hmm. right? There's so much great shit there, and they've shown they can do it, but they never got to do it as Superman. Yeah. I don't know much about small. Though, sure, but I do and I don't. And for the record, full stop. You don't need to. That's okay. what I'm saying. Yeah. In very much in the Arkham Asylum way, you can jump into Arkham and not have watched the animated series, but you're gonna be like, man, this guy's a really good Batman. And yeah. He's got a really good rapport with Joker. You know what I mean? Like that's- for me, the Clark and Lois dynamic is what Last Son is about on a lot of levels, and is what this game really needs to be about as well. Hmm. Go ahead, I like Jay. that. No, I, I mean I just want to piggyback on that. I, you can jump into Smallville and just be like, oh wait, I understand this instantly. Yeah, you contextually, it is not confusing whatsoever. Yeah, yeah I mean I, I watched the first three seasons. I want to say, but sure. the, it's I was gonna ask. There's season eleven, correct? Is a comic comic book, book. We're, that this that's two in this the weeds? if you were gonna come to me and I was doing the press tour for this, right? I'm Brian Intahar, but I'm I'm Brian Intahar for <laughs> the Superman game I've created. It's I'm gonna be straight up with you this is not a sequel to smallville this is alternate universe fan fiction whatever you want we're not going to get everybody back we're not going to you know i don't even know if erica durance wants to be lois but i in my perfect world i'm building this thing yes but i'm telling you from the jump no no i'm casting them because they're great at these characters I'm, okay i'm getting so excited right now because i didn't know which pitch was you yeah. know you've kept it secret from me too but sydney's largely coming to talk about smallville love it so this is this love is going to be it. great I well see wait. and so that's my thing right my, i am giving you the best superman game of all time that's my goal here, right? Yeah. I don't want to fuck this up. I want to prove to you while it's right. I want 
to deliver a story. I want this to be, I'm not going to go as lofty as to say as good as a naughty dog story, but I'm talking about like, I want you to feel as we do this. And I want, cause that's what I, when I read the book, there's scenes in here that I fucking feel that we'll talk about. No, here. this better be as good as a naughty dog story. I expect nothing less. Where do we open for this epic? Insane Superman story involving all sorts of aliens and villains, Tim. The answer is simple. The supermarket. We are Hell inside yeah, of a yeah. Metropolis supermarket, right? And we are doing a slow dolly shot coming down the aisle. We are at ground level. The linoleum's coming past you. You're seeing all the soda cola on the shelves. You're pushing past Evil all these vegetables. different things. Uh, at the top of the aisle, they come around. Uh, a shopping cart comes around with the wobbly wheel. And it's a pair of high heels. And it's a pair of loafers. And they're walking down in their dress clothes. And you see that. And it's a conversation between a husband and wife, right? And if, sure enough, of course, she says, well, I don't know, Smallville. And you pan up. And it's them arguing about what they're going to buy. Not arguing, but giving each other shit about it she's you know very much like well it doesn't matter if we get it it's it that you don't need to worry about it being fat free but i do we're not getting those cookies get you know blah, blah, blah. and they're having this mundane conversation she's calling smile he's calling her low they're having this fun thing it's our first chance seeing tom and erica in years do these roles or whatever right and not seeing them of course i yeah. just voices yeah. i'm not at all saying it's their likenesses or anything like that similar to arkham asylum right where it was like batman looks like this now he doesn't look like animated series batman all of this going on this is one of the first of many Easter eggs you don't need to understand, Tim, uh -huh. but would go a long way with a fan, right? Yeah. We're talk, talk, talking, right? And then just out of the blue, ee! and it's this that high-pitched noise we know from Smallville in the beginning of the Kryptonian key that went in the ship and the way the Somebody fuck. Said. No, no, not no, that not one. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> that will definitely be on the radio okay. at some point, and they're going to turn it <laughs> yeah. off. Like, I hate that song. Uh, but it's that ee! that cl only Clark can hear. Yeah. And so they're there and they're, they're having this conversation ee! and he just drops to one knee, grabs his ears and you can see it in his face. And we have the, we, the camera comes down with him. We're shooting up as he's like this face going red and looks like small will get up. What small will get up, What's wrong? And she drops down. I'm like, what is wrong? He's like, it's that it's the, it's the noise. It's the Kryptonian. No I haven't heard this. I haven't. She's like, I got it. And she's like, I know go and that's when again this is we're doing we're fucking we have unlimited budget nobody fucking cares it's our world we're fucking right. around with it everybody understands right and he, she's like I know go and he's like all right thanks starts to rise and you get doom 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 yeah do, 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 do. And it's like slow as he gets back up, pulls his shit together, turns, kisses her on the cheek, turns around, w starts walking to the back of the grocery store, looking around, you know what I mean? Then it's into the back room of the grocery store. Then it's fast. Then we're going. Then it's the door flies open. He rips open the chest. It's Superman, right? Uh, it's him then jumping into the air now in full garb, right? We're up into the air, and this is where we're. Undies or no undies? We're doing undies, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trunks are back, yeah. Betty. Flights Trunks are fucking back. And flights, <laughs> flights and tights. He's coming at the camera. The camera spins back around, and you are in control of Superman now. You are shooting up into the thing. Uh, he does the beep and, and into his ear, and, and he's like, I still feel ridiculous wearing this, and it's Lois. And she's like, I know, and I understand that you can hear me wherever you are. I can't hear you, though, so you're going to get used to wearing this. And it's like, all right. She's, I know you're. we've talked about this before with yeah. other games and stuff, right? She's the guy in the chair. But mm -hmm. she's not limited to that she's a reporter she's his partner again that's the whole thing right okay. she's talking to him of course what's going on he's like what he's like i'm shooting off she's like what do you see he's like i see this thing coming yeah I, she's like i'm getting an alert right now of course from star labs there seems to be some kind of uh there's some object coming in from space right now it's coming in hot and heavy they see is it is it a meteor is it an asteroid he's like i don't know i'm coming up on it my even my vision right now is obscured by breaking through the atmosphere blah blah, blah. as all this is happening you're getting the flight controls you're feeling it you're on rails in quotes right of i'm sending you up to it you see it you know you're breaking through this all happening as that's happening though all of a sudden you get flanked by dudes over here you look over they're LexCorp guys they've got they've understand something's breaking through too and they're like superman step aside we've got this he's like what's your the whole conversation here of like you, what's your jurisdiction they get into it they're not humans they're robots of course that are you know he can just smash up tear apart and not do it this is where you're in the field for the com the controls how you know light and heavy attacks work how you can use your and heat you're vision. flying at this point yeah when these guys engage you you got a quick cut scene of it's still hurtling at you guys but it's far enough away that you can be like Guys, I really don't have time for this. And you start, and it's the tutorial of like, you know, whatever it's going to be. Right, bumpers, heat vision, this is that, blah, blah, Because you have your powers. I want you to have your powers and your Superman. What is the gameplay, though? Like, give, give third, me an example. You're doing, it's, it's Arkham, but you can fly. Okay. You know what I mean? You have third person. It's a third person uh, action game. Mm -hmm. it, an action adventure game. Uh, and, and I am also piggybacking off of the thing that I think gets lost a lot when people talk about Superman. Superman, the animated series, right? One of the things I found really refreshing about it that never really gets touched on in the show is that 
for all intents and purposes, Superman could be killed by he- Earth weapons in animated series. Mm-hmm. He's strong. He's fucking, uh, you know, he bolts bounce off of him and all this stuff. Yeah. But a tank coming to town, the apocalypse weapons people use, all these different things. He could go down. He's he very much an early post-crisis iteration of himself. Exactly, yeah. right? He's not like I'm, he's not Christopher Reeve. I'm going to rewind time. I'm not going to eat fucking kryptonite. I have weak, I, I can struggle here, right? Yeah. And so... Lex's guys, of course, are using. Uh, um, we'll have a whole sub thread here of uh, that. Th- this he's been Superman for a while. Apocalypse Tech has made its way down, so they are using guns that Lex has manufactured and sold the gangs and done all this stuff that can like not not like one shot kill you, but they're wearing you down and you're dodging you and like you should, especially in these early stages of the game, feel like all right, I got this for the most part because I want you to feel that way. Anyways, you fight all these dudes, right? Things still coming. You take back off. Finally, you know, you, you get up on it, and he's like, "It's it, low. It's it's a meteor. It's coming right for. It's coming right down. You know, to smash into uh, Centennial Park. We've got to stop it." All right. Blah, blah, blah. He gets up. You you run up to it. You get up to it. You slam into it. And when you slam, you know, you come up Superman pose, grab it like this. You grab into it, and immediately it slams you back, and you're out of control now. And you're spiraling, and it's got you pinned against it. You're you're you know, it's this giant like, uh, if you look at the comic, it's this giant like a uh, oval, not Oreo, but like <laughs> like yeah, like think of an Oreo with like things that it's slammed into you. This giant rock, and you're trying, you're spinning off it. You spin past it too far. You're behind it. You're catching up. You're trying to grab it, but it's rock. It's breaking off as you do. You they were you using quick time events you're doing all stuff but it's frantic and you're not just fucking nailing it you're not superman just nailing it right like i want the amazing animated series pilot uh from the pilot uh moment where uh the plane's crashing and superman for his like debut flies up and grabs the wing and the wing rips off and the plane just goes and he goes nice idea clark and then he yeah. like takes off right That's like great. you're still a part of this Eventually, though, you're back in the front. You're pushing back on it. You're tapping square, whatever the hell I'm going to use these commands to be, right? And Because I want it just to be cinematic. You're pressed up against it. You're breaking through those fires, rocks. You slam into cent- the Centennial Park. You're, push- you're pushing against it as you go. Daily Planet's behind you. We see it from behind. It's smashing. It's cutting. It's tearing up right there. We smash the Superman statue that's been there. We go up. We tear it up and finally stop it right at the steps of the planet, right? So we don't smash into the building. You've done it. Congratulations. And it's that moment of just him going... <sighs> And like pressed up against it, and then when he turns, like we finally see that like the rock's broken away, and it's a pane of glass. And on the other side is a little boy, mm-hmm. and it's so he's there, like, hi, right? And then it's this. This is where we're setting up the plot here to begin with of what Last Son is. Is that a boy is rocketed to Earth? Uh, the government immediately gets involved. Obviously, it brings him to location. Superman goes in there, is talking to the generals. It's probably at Star Labs, but it's you know the government's super involved, right? And I'm trying to run through this quickly now, of course, because this is a big game. Sorry, oh, yeah. huge game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah it's I think so, we've covered the first half hour. It's so, right? Yeah, exactly. It's so fun to talk about. Sorry. Um, but you're, it's the scene from the comic, basically, of talking to him, and the kid's not talking. He's not saying anything, blah, blah, blah. Like, and Superman finally going over, and he's like, hi, how are you, blah, blah, And the kid opens his mouth, and he speaks Kryptonian, right? He's speaking Kryptonese. And they have this conversation, and you know, the guy's like, what is he speaking Kryptonese? What, what, what did he say? He's hungry. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like this cut of then, then we, you know, we're going back and it's Clark and Lois talking about it. Like this, this kid's, you know, Kryptonian, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like, what is, it's all the stuff from the comic here. And these are cut scenes and we're moving around and stuff is like, I'm, and I'm trying to move too, obviously, but like, you know, well, what does that mean? Clark, you know what I mean? Him just being quiet and like, what well, means like I have to take care of him, right? Like this is how it is. And it's him and Lois not debating, but Lois being like, you're the last, you know, as in the comic, it is like, right. You're the last son of Krypton. And he's like, yeah, I was until you know, I think in the comic, it's like a year ago, Supergirl showed up. Like, right. Like maybe yeah. I'm not, maybe this kid is da, 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 da. And so the next thing, next big plot point in terms of, I mean, you're playing stuff like, I don't know. You can interrupt me at any time to ask questions. And like, but this is not question. The one yes. question I have. Yeah. Sure. Why is this a video game? Everything you've said so far sounds like a movie. Sure. Well, I mean, I, you're playing it. I mean, it could, yeah. I think I feel like if I laid out the plot of Arkham Asylum, right, it would still be like that could be a movie. Yeah, I think that you I, know, I, where, where, where my my thoughts go. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was going to say that like the I, what's the gameplay? Is that what awesome, we're losing? But yeah, I just I, I just feel you like, know me. You know me better than anybody. I'm tr- I'm such a story whore that I'm giving you the storyline. Story let's this, just, all let's, this sounds great, but I feel like what made the Arkham games special was that they were and let, you know if you have other good examples of this, the first real game to do Metroidvania in 3D. Sure. Well. And it's I like, think it's I, like I that. think this game from what we've played of Spider-Man at preview events and stuff I think they ripped me off that it has more to do with that than it does with Arkham in terms of that. So let's pull back 
pause the story. Don't worry about it. You have Metropolis. Metropolis is your playground. There you have a giant island that it, or not island, but island like Manhattan. It's an island. But right? a very uncharted style opening here at the beginning. Of course. You're, to it, establish and then unleash you into your open world where it is that cool. Here's what's happening. You have Metropolis. It's bright and sunny. There's the yellow mission. That's the story mission. There's side missions that are going on, investigations that are going on. There's the normal. We're going to do it in tiers where there's the normal in the beginning. All right, cool. There's a crook. There's a robbery. There's a bank robbery. There's this uh, side mission of Metallo coming in and doing this thing. You know, uh, we're bringing in Toy Man's gone rogue over here. The beginning part of this game in this section is traditional Superman of what you'd expect. All right, cool, right? We're in Metropolis. There's all these things to do. That's happening. The first thing I wanted to get out, and I have it in the original design doc, right? Is the idea, of course, that whenever when people played when I played Superman Returns, right? Yeah. What do you try to do when you're Superman in a Superman video game? You immediately try to break it and show that the game's dumb, right? right. So you shoot up into the sky straight up till you hit the ceiling, right? My thing is, and there'll be a shortcut, obviously, through the touchpad or start menu or whatever. But when you do that and you shoot straight up and you fog, you kick it into super gear. No. no funny when you kick it into super gear right what you do is you shoot all the way up and again the camera whips back around you and you're up in uh you're up in the stratosphere hanging yeah, there right shit. exactly and your in ca your cape hangs there and you you yeah you sh you look down and you see it all spring up on your map the yeah. icons you're hearing it you're cool. seeing it with telescopic vision yeah. it's like cool you can do that every time or you can hit it which will you know kick up mm -hmm. the map but it's basically this is you being a satellite looking down seeing the information lois is reporting scanners are reporting what you're hearing in terms of domestic disputes little things that are going on all this shit right and the nuclear man attacks you from behind and nuclear man comes up and he scratches you on the back of the neck You're like, oh i'm sick uh the other way of course would be all right cool we're on an island for spider-man it makes sense he can't web swing over to the next yeah. borough or whatever right, right. so superman's going to shoot off to the sides i totally want you to do that you can totally do that later on in the for when it makes sense it might uh, what i've toyed around with is that it would change like time of day or whatever mm -hmm. but it doesn't even really need to do that it is you shooting off right but then it's you coming back and i want something obscene I want something I've seen like 350 lines of dialogue that are to torture you if you want to actually try to test us. But it's you, him going off and him coming back and be like, man, I, was, I can't believe Hal needed help taking out Sinestro. He's fought him so many times. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, oh, man, I'm glad I could help Diana take care of Cheetah. I'm glad, you know, it's like, it's always good to catch up with Bruce. Little lines of like, yep, you shot Things off to the side happening. trying to break the world. But no, there is a DC universe happening out there. You were a part of it. That all went and happened. But as you come back, that's happening. Is that's your really cool. rewind feature just flying around the earth enough times? No, we're space? not doing okay, that. We're right, never bringing good. that up. All it right. ruined everything for everyone. All right. Uh, so that's like the first part of what the gameplay is in terms of open worldness. Uh -huh. So there's all that stuff happening, right? Uh, the story, of course, is the big mission that's moving the plot along, but also then moving the world along because we're going to have mm -hmm. different phases of Metropolis for sure, right? Um, and it gets weird because I don't, you know, I know the real realistic expectations of how much a developer can do for how much you're actually going to see your play. Well, it doesn't matter. Obviously, this is all pie in the sky stuff. All that's happening, but as the plot advances, right, Superman goes back to visit uh, the Kryptonian boy, and when he gets there, the place is cleared out. Have you read this? I forget. Mm. When he gets there, the place is cleared out, right? And it is that thing of, like, in my game, when he gets there and finds the block, and he picks up the block, and the kid's gone, we do the slow pan, we go, we do that, and we sp spin around from him holding it to do it, and it's just, he's got the red eyes. You know what I mean? That's always, like, oh, shit's about to get real, right? <laughs> and so what it is, is him, like, <laughs> shooting off, you're in control again, and we're kind of keeping you on rails as we fly, but it's Lois being like, I see you're on the move, what's going on? He's like, they took him, and he, he's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "They they took they took the Kryptonian kid. We're gonna find it, and if, they've taken it to an army base, right? That's like three or four awesome panels in the comic, mm -hmm. where the kids underground they, they're they're watching when they just hear boom, boom, and it's just fucking Superman knocking down the doors, and the guys turn their AKs, awesome. up, their game, and him just turning the rifle barrels up, and like you, you, he's basically like, you fucked me, no way. And takes the kid and goes. This one, you get to play that, right? So it's now Superman attacking the U.S. Army, attacking a U.S. installation, right? And Question. of course, not killing anybody. Yeah, yeah, not killing anybody. Uh, so in these moments, uh, obviously, I imagine you're going to be moving. You've already articulated a lot the difference between the power fantasy of being Superman, the surprise disappointment, you know, reaching for something and it breaking, yeah. that also being evocative of the storytelling, the combination of power, challenge, vulnerability, invulnerability. When you're doing something like attacking an army base, is this a power fantasy? Are you vulnerable in any way during the sequence? I want you to be, yes. I want there to be mortar fire. You, the gameplay is you're dodging, you're you know going from. Okay. I don't know if there's a fail state to this. Yeah, because this isn't like the gameplay, right? This is a moment I want you to feel. I'm Superman. I can't believe they fucking lied to me. Like mm -hmm. like I wouldn't find them, right? And so I do want it to be that you're overpowered, and I. But I do. It's also a thing of. 
I don't want you killing people. So it's like yeah. you're dodging the mortar fire and then you're, you're I'm assuming I'm going to have it where it's like, you know, you've dodged enough. A thing pops up. You shoot in to go to the tank. But it's like you, you know, going down, swooping through the treads, coming back up, ripping off the top, grabbing the guy, tossing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's very clear. G.I. Joe doing. parachutes everywhere. Yeah, well, not parachutes. He's yeah, fucking right. tossing to the ground. No, you know I get the, yeah, yeah. What about um, following up on that tension? Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if I understood your initial pitch for the kind of uncharted opening of this thing and then the city opens yeah, yeah. up. It's largely about, Tim asked, why is this a game? Uh, this is about experiencing the emotional gravity of being Superman. Right. Feeling like him. Right. Grabbing something and not working, being surprised, being put in the headspace of Superman. How does that play out in sequences like this? How does it make you feel like Superman? How are you going to make him feel the urgency and anger to break these rules? That's why I think this isn't. A, this is probably a no fail state thing. This army, okay. very this very interesting, uh, uh, very specific instance where it is like. It maybe you've taken too much time and it's like restart or whatever, but it's like you're dodging the thing, you're 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 making the commands. Maybe it is even choices, right? Where it is, mm-hmm. all right, cool. I'm gonna take out the treads in this tank, or no, I'm gonna go through this uh, watchtower and knock that out, but save the guy or whatever. Because what I really am trying to do is get you to, you know, smash through the doors, smash into the ground, get there. I still want the moment of turning up the guns and probably yeah. a really cool cinematic. But it is. The agency of this, you Lois, like trying to probably calm you down as you go, yeah. like don't you? Know, he's like, uh, she's like, I know you're not gonna do anything, but remember, like these guys are on our side. He's like, they just had orders, yada yada yada. Get down there, get the kid, get out, right? And then, the, in terms of the plot points here and what's happening in the story, right? This moves us to Clark being like, this kid's Kryptonian. We need to take care of him. No one else will take care of him. It has to be us, right? And Lois being like, we've talked about, the, which is from, I'm just pulling all this from the book. We've talked about this before. We're not with our lives. We're not equipped to have a child. Like this is not what we can do. This is this. Why we can't do this, Smallville, mm-hmm. right? To which the story leads to the well, the kid speaks English now, and he's like, "Why?" And they're like, "Oh my, you're picking up quick." This leads to them going back, basically, to the government and being like, "All right, fine, take them," but like doing it on a in a giant like a press conference. Which mm-hmm. is this awesome scene or whatever? Like, finally, the guys, like, why, why the show? And he's like, because then now you can't fuck me. Everyone knows what you're doing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, this isn't something happening behind closed doors. I'm turning mm-hmm. him over. You're explaining this, blah blah. blah. You know, while the press conference is happening and we'll, in the game world and the story, like we've we've definitely hinted at this before that like Lex is paying attention to all of this, right? Like Lex is seeing this as an opportunity, as usual, to uh, put, push his uh, anti alien agenda. You know, that Superman's the cause of all this. This all the problems. Uh, in the comic, what happens is Lex unleashes Bizarro, and that's what will happen here to give you a, fu- a, a boss fight inside of Metropolis. But it also pushes forward the story here of it's amazing in the book. Bizarro, you know, the, Lo- Lois, the press is all there. Superman turns over the kid. He says goodbye. He turns like says goodbye to the kid, and Bizarro just comes out of the ground and fucking pancakes him into the ground and through the into the sewers or whatever. So the fight starts there. And meanwhile, it's just, it's, yeah, if you don't mind me interrupting. Yeah. So I'm trying to save most of the questions for the panel, obviously. Sure. But, and my but, elevator pitch will be much quicker than this. No, no, I, I, don't worry. <laughs> but what, I, uh, what I'm thinking about here is this is another problem Superman games run into is what happens when you do fight the super menace. Yeah. You know, it's very few things that can go toe to toe with Superman. Right. How do you capture that in this game? How do you make that work? I mean, this is a boss fight, I think, set with stages of it, right? We're, f- we're starting the sewer. We're fighting there. Eventually, Bizarro gets the upper hand because he has to. Well, his whole goal is that Lex has dispatched him to get the Superboy. And there's this brilliant moment in the, in the book where when Lex or um, uh, when Bizarro knocks down Superman for a second and gets away, ra- goes up to a random child and goes, are you Superboy? And picks him up and the kid's arm breaks. He breaks the kid's arm and he goes, you're not Superboy, Superboy, no break and throw him away. And like Superman gets the kid and takes him to the hospital. And like, Jesus. so like there's these interstitials between the fights. So it's, we're fighting in the sewer up there. Superman saves kid fight there. And like, th- this is where it is. Like Bizarro can knock you out. And if he knocks you out, he's going to take, it will have the scene of him grabbing the kid flying away. And like Lois be like, no, and Superman down. Right. Like this is the fail state for this boss yeah. fight. Uh, again, it's like, you will have health meters. It won't even be health meters. We, you know, red encroaching from the sides and shit like that. But you're brawling and you're fighting and we're mixing it up between, you know, obviously he has the power and he's throwing you through buildings and you're trying to stop. And like, obviously, uh, when you're in these things, there's great moments for instead of going to engage him, there's people or the something's about to fall. You got to get over there and stop that and save Mm -hmm. that and in, in, you know, push the agenda and what is core to Superman of like do no harm, right? Like he's trying to stop this guy, but he's not gonna let other people get crushed in the in the moment, right? So he is stopping things from falling, getting people out, things are falling all over the place and all this shit's happening. And like as that's happening in the story as you go from sewers to probably it doesn't matter. Sewers to in front of the Daily Planet to up in the air to back down on the ground, right? There's this awesome moment in the book, right, where uh, Bizarro picks up a school bus and thro- throws it. And Superman does it hits Bizarro, but the bus gets away and it lands on the kid. 
mm. right? And the kid's Kryptonian, so he's fine. Like, we've yeah. already seen him fly. We already know he's got the powers, right? And Superboy, no break. It lands on him. And Lois, Lois is like, somebody's got to help him. Somebody's got to help him. And the bus lands on him because she saw it coming. And she gets over there and it's one of the most beautiful moments, heartbreaking moments in the book, but she gets over there and like looks through the gla- the, the rubble, right? And it's the kid standing there, bus on top of him, but all ar- like peeled away from him, yeah. like it clear. And it's just him tears streaming on his face because yeah. he doesn't understand what the fuck's happening. He's still just a kid. Somebody he, threw a bus at him. He yeah. doesn't know that the bus <laughs> is going to, you know, what his powers are and stuff like that. You beat Bizarro, right? You kn- knock him out. Congratulations, everybody. But then it's the moment of Lois saying, like, she's with the kid. And it's, again, right, pulled right from the book of just, like, I know we said we can't, but I want to try. Mm. And then it's a jump to Smallville where there's a knock on the Kent store. And so we'd have the moment in the house, the knock on the door, the door opens, and it's all three of them. And it's Clark, just like in the book, of just, like, 30 years ago, you took in a, 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 a boy who crashed from another planet and made him off, passed him off as one of your own. Teach us. You know what I mean? Like, show us how you did that. And so then we have this interstitial in Smallville where Lex is doing more shit back in Metropolis, gathering all those forces. The Kents are teaching you how to do this. You pick the name Christopher as a great Christopher Reeve note. All these awesome moments, right? But, uh, all right, cool. We're doing it. We're in. Everything's great. While that happens, finally, like, the ship that brought him to Earth, like, sets off a pulse or whatever, uh, and then that opens a thing up in the uh, the sky, the galaxy on the outskirts of the universe behind the moon or whatever, and more, like, just tons of those ships come through come tearing out of the space right and they come in and they land in antarctica outside the fortress of solitude it's zod it's ursa it's a uh, non i guess actually in the beginning here i'm sorry it's just the three of them yeah and they come out and the storyline here is that the kid is actually zod and ursa's kid he doesn't know this when he gets there he's not he's just a kid he doesn't understand yeah. what's happened but he was the tether from the phantom zone to get them out of the phantom zone right so with them out of the phantom zone right they make their move to metropolis they come there they fight superman they it's a, another great scene of him being him about to rip open his shirt and uh, non just smashing him through a wall and his suit's tearing apart his like Clark Kent suit is tearing apart yeah. revealing a Superman suit and it's this thing that eventually what it is at the penultimate is like they needed to get there to get something from Superman I, and I forget what it is from the book but again we're just playing pretty close to the, the script here and what this does after they get the thing they need from Superman and get reunited with their son is give them the ability with the Phantom Zone projector they got from the Fortress of Solitude is to reopen the Phantom Zone tear that they came through and bring out all the other ships. So it's ne- this is what I was talking about before. Tons and tons and tons of mm-hmm. other ships coming out that contain Kryptonian s- villains, the worst of the worst here, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when they turn the Phantom Zone projector on Superman and project him into the Phantom Zone. Right. In the Phantom Zone, the only person they left behind, because in my world, not current continuity, Brainiac is the thing that destroyed Krypton, is Brainiac. Brainiac is still trapped in there. Yeah. So you get there, and it's a, it's a completely different world. It's weird. Superman's way depowered. He's trying to live. It's Brainiac kind of rules this place and has his robots and his giant thing. And so you're dodging this, trying to stay out of that. You're making references to not being sure how much time's gone. In the book, mon is there, who people might know from Supergirl. Yeah. Probably there as well. So you have a counterpart there to kind of catch you up on what the fuck's happening here. And like Brainiac's rule and that they left him and Brainiac behind for different reasons. Uh, eventually, though, you get into a boss fight where it's you, mon versus Brainiac. You're able to do it. That then does this. That gives you the, Christonian, the, crypt, the crystal to get out of the Phantom Zone and you come back. When you come back, and this sounds crazy because I know I've talked almost probably an hour already about this fucking first part. Of, that is literally the first half, maybe third of the game. Because when you come back, time has passed. And just like it has in the book. And what's happened is the Zod has established himself as pretty much king of the world. Mm-hmm. This is one of those things I'm still fishy about. I don't like in the book. In the book, they have a couple of throwaway scenes of them like bringing in Supergirl and Power Girl and Batman and cuffs and shit like that. And I'm like, I get they it. I don't need that. I know. But if I've established those other people, I need a reason that they're not trying to stop it or have mm-hmm. failed. And I don't know if I like a dome over the city like Kandor or something oh, like that. Can you can you have a continuity where Superman's the only hero on Earth? I mean, is that going to be a I problem could, but you? I like the idea, remember, of him flying in and out. Now, he could be flying out to the side instead of saying something by Diana. He could yeah. be like, man, glad I stopped that, you know, drug gang in Colombia or glad mm-hmm. I stopped that earthquake in mm-hmm. uh, Colombia or whatever. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. That's a moot point, right? But when we get back now, what we found is I want you to have had enough time in the open world metropolis to see, oh, it's it's like comic books. It's bright and it's cheery and it's beautiful, but there are gang, there's robberies, there's cooks, there's crooks and all this stuff. When you come cooks too. 
Huh? There's cooks. There's yeah. co- oh, there's plenty many of cooks, cooks too. Too many cooks. cooks. Too many cooks. Yeah. Too many cooks. Too many when cooks. you come back this time, though, this is where I want it to be. It's a darker, desolate place. People are living under the rule of these Kryptonian people. Lex has his own army. He's established of, you know, uh, robot bad guys. Not even robots. I don't want it to always be robots. I hate that shit. It's, it's guys <laughs> that are wearing apocalyptic ar- or apocalypse armor. He's, you know, lifted and mm-hmm. tweaked or whatever. And he's still trying to be... Lex is always a bad guy, right? But he's always a bad guy who has good intentions. He's like, yeah. I'm trying to protect humanity. I'm trying to save the yeah. earth. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. And but it, what happens is like, and I, this is another thing of I don't know how many guys I've done. Uh, we have, we'll say, six mini bosses, mid bosses that rule parts of the town of Metropolis now. Okay. And so at the center, so now it's crackdown. Honestly, and don't get me wrong, because this sounds bad. It's more like Prototype 2. Oh. Remember in Prototype 2, a lot of not great things about that game. One of the things I did like is that they had encampments that you'd go into and you'd fight a mini mid-boss that would then give you a new ability. Stick with me on this. Zod has established himself as King of the World, King of Metropolis, whatever you want it to be, right? And he's organizing these forces and he, le- he leads all the Kryptonian villains, right? Similar to Zelda. I, I assume he's taken over the Daily Planet as his HQ, right? And it's him there. At any point, once mm. you're back from the Phantom Zone, you can march your ass right into the Daily Planet and try to fight Zod. Okay. And I want him to fucking literally kill you. I want you to walk in there and hit... Because what I want this to be is what I always talk about with Man of Steel and what hopefully you would have seen in the fight when they all came down, mm-hmm. right? Of basically, no. Yeah, you're Superman. You've been Superman for two years. You fought a whole bunch of great guys. I... Am a bread warrior. I I am a marine who now has superpowers. Yeah. So when if you go in there and you fight him, I want it to be that you throw a punch and he like grabs it, breaks your arm the back way, does all the stuff, does, and finally it's just like you were a fool to come here, Kal El, yeah. stomps you and it's game over. And so what I want it to be is that we've established that fact that sure, Superman's fought a whole bunch of uh, Calabac and weird people and all these different things, right? Uh, Dark Side's minions, all these things, but like they weren't on this level. I love the idea that you kind of have like Mike Tyson from Punch Out in the center sure. of your city and the and the cheat code right there. And so what I want to you them. to do then is go yeah. out and like there's still the random crimes of Lexus people and they're harassing humans and other humans still need your help and you're doing all this stuff. But you get into these mid boss things where you go in and fight them, and as you fight them, you learn a new move. You learn some kind of new combo new or move. whatever, sw- some sweet new move that you can then, as you'll eventually figure out, you're putting this all together to fight Zod. That it's you're a gonna double come dragon in. heart system building. Up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. And so you do all of that to eventually go to Zod to beat Zod and throw him back to the Phantom Zone. And by throwing him back and whatever he took from you, that will then trigger everyone to go back, which of course includes Christopher, who you don't want to send back, but you have to, to actually close the hole. And in the same vein as the comic, Christopher knows that and you know sacrifices himself to go. I feel like I spent so much time setting up the beginning because I want it to be awesome and make sense. And then I get the ending is so by the numbers, but I'm just trying to get you to where we're yeah. going and no, that's not the, that's talk the to you for 20 years. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the hard part of doing this. Yeah. No, I, I, I love what you're describing here. I love it story wise. I like getting the, the summation of the Donner story. I also think you've thought it through mechanically pretty well. Obviously, there's still some places that need polished up. Oh, and plenty. Thought, but, oh, my but God. There's, I do think that the choice of an action adventure game, why are you leaning into that? Is it because you love that kind of game? Or that, do you think that's just what best suited the story? I think it story? serves the thing. You know, I think it serves the product. And it could be, you know, I, open world is always interesting and weird. It could be more of an uncharted where it is open areas. You know, I mean, you're starting somewhere and then it's funneling See, you. The, the thing for me, that, on me. like the, the, going back to the, like, why is this a game? Why not just a movie? I feel like when you, when you take these video games, especially the ones that are way more narrative focused where the story matters and like that is the pitch for this of like mm. in this game the story is supposed to make you feel and stuff i feel like the reason uncharted succeeds is the pretty much the moment to moment gameplay is built on a, a lot of the parkour and a lot of the climbing and and it's fun to get from one area to the other and that is the point here's a shootout whatever yeah. like shooting's fun not great it's fun and you just keep going and there's never too much of it before you get to the next cutscene sure. that's your reward for what you just did with this, I just I can't wrap my head around what makes the gameplay fun, because the with Superman specifically, like, yeah. does he ever touch the floor? Does he walk on the floor, or is he constantly to. flying? I think if and, you want him to, he touches the floor. And what if you're flying? How does it control? Because I've never played a game where it feels good to be moving in all the different axes mm-hmm. while also fighting for extended periods of time. That's why I feel like the fighting in the air is something that's happening in specific moments, like when yeah. we're coming up and fighting, because sure, that's a pain in the ass, right? For a lot like of The things. Dragon Ball Xenoverse fighting games, I feel like do a very good job of the kind of three-dimensional or like 
yeah, three dimensional, but also three sixty with, the, with the, the not X Y the Z axis, like moving around, um, fighting. But that is very contained moments because it, it's a fighting well, I, game. I mean, mm-hmm. so stick with me. I think that there's. I uh, you're not wrong. I feel I, for in terms of like flight, I, it's going to control and fly like Lego Batman Two did. Which mm-hmm. I thought was an open world game, and it okay. is the best Superman game there's ever been. I, I like I like that Cause, contrast because it is like you you it, it makes sense and it's natural and you get to go do it and you get to and it was fun to for me it's like that game was fun to be Superman in terms of exploration. I want to go get gold bricks and I'm flying around. Oh, there's a gold brick. There's a red one. Mm-hmm. How do I like, stop and hover and tr- like survey the situation and come down and use it if I had to and mm, walk? Interesting. It's the same way though in terms. Of, you're making a great point, but I think it's an analog to a Batman Arkham Asylum where it's like cool. There's Batman brawling yeah. levels, and then there's Batman detective levels, yeah. right? And I think that is the fact of, I think, personally, I think flying's fun, and I think you, we could have fun with that, right? And it is that thing of, will there be some care at the end of the stick to keep you mm-hmm. uh, more like Neo in the Matrix, like in between buildings, rather than going up and just going over, which you could do, but I want to keep it the other way. And I don't know if there is some, not Kryptonite Fog, but like something, there's some other, <laughs> somebody, somebody, <laughs> has to be. somebody, oh, there's going to be uh, definitely a joke about oh, it. Somebody far you, smarter than me can figure out a reason that's happening. But I think making you crisscross the city in the same way of like what we've played of Spider-Man, right? At preview events. Like, but I feel like that's why like Spider-Man works for this type of thing. Because it's more grounded, Spider-Man, more limited. This, I guess Spider-Man is the best example um, that I tr- was trying to bring up with Uncharted. Where sure. Uncharted, like it's these bite side things where the traversal is the point. It's fun. And it's the, there's a, almost a puzzle of figuring out the path following the cracks as Nathan sure. Drake so he doesn't fucking fall off like an idiot. Um, but with Spider-Man, swinging is fun. Like yeah. swinging, it, g- it gives you a reason to be in in between the buildings, and there's the momentum and the physics of it, and all of that. Right. Whereas, like when you're just flying, like, you think you, an autopilot flying. It's, it it kind of just feels a little too too autopilot, and or, or else it feels a little too too open. It reminds me of Star Fox 64, where I love the uh, on rail stuff. Once you get to the all range mode, yeah, it's, yeah. it always just feels a little bit but, too. But there is a way to take that in between too. I think that could be well executed. We keep thinking in terms of of uh, DM or trying to uh, deter someone from going high. For example, what if instead of trying to deter someone for going high, we try to incentivize them to stay low? You know, if yeah, all the collectibles, yeah. if all the power ups, if everything is between the buildings, there are reasons to go down between the buildings. Go up to spot like Superman does, then go down to grab. Mm-hmm. And while you're down there, interesting things are happening that make you want to stay down there. Maybe it's not about making you want to get high. Because I do think air combat, one of the things that bothers me about uh, Death and Return to Superman mm-hmm. and, and the way that he fights Doomsday is. You're talking about the Genesis game? Uh, no, actually, S- I'm S-Sanus? talking about the comic. Oh, okay, uh, my apologies. Is, is that I've got a lot of problems with that story. And one of the ones oh, that sure. always drove me nuts was that he spends half the time ground pounding with Doomsday. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. Superman is at home in the air. You know, you can fly. You belong in the sky. Lois said it. She's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he is a first and foremost a flying character. The air combat would have to be perfect to this. I do think he could nail that. There's not a lot of reason to go to the ground outside of drama in a Superman story. But see, that's what gets so exciting for me is the moments where you get to turn it on its head where I've thought about it or the developer has thought about it, right? Yeah. So it's like you're fighting Bizarro, right? And you want to take off and you go to take off and you have that. We have awesome animations, right? Of him grabbing your... In the sm- Hulk smashing you to the ground, yeah, right? Of not doing it. that. Or even if you're, when you're fighting Metalla, right? Of whatever he's doing. If he has like basically an EMP of kryptonite he can set off that drops you before you can get out. And there's a way to. There are contextual ways to make that exactly, work. Exactly. And you yeah. can knock him down and stun him and then you can go up and then you can come down for smashes and shit. Like it's just that I totally get it. And I, these are real problems. My game has I mean, I, I real problems. The, no, I, guess, I like it. The, what I'm bringing up is the, the original question here of like why isn't there a good superman game yeah i think it's these reasons right well, I, yeah because it's like i feel like a lot of people have a problem with superman as a character and you're addressing that with the story yeah, yeah but does this make a good video game sure i feel like that is that is the thing that i would be shocked if we ever see a good super the way you'll game. see a good superman game happen is the same way you'll see hopefully a good spider-man game happen and the same reason you saw a good batman games happen right is hey we're not gonna make you do a licensed cash in weird thing take your time Make this work. Mm-hmm. And like that would be the thing, like right? You, we, when you talk to people who are making superhero games mm-hmm. or and just games in general, right? There is that we know we had to get something right. And what it is, you have to make flying fun. Yeah, you have you to have make it to fun. Make and, fun. I, and it's that thing of like you raise great points and it's been fucked up and it'll be fucked up again. And like I hope we wouldn't be the people to fuck it up. But it would have to be that all right, cool. Like stories and cutscenes and all that shit's happening. Let's really fucking focus on flying and what makes yeah. flying fun. And how it's, do we keep you there? Is it, what, what there should, are there Kryptonian sunstones on the ground and that's why you're doing it? Is it that Bibbo's running around doing this? Are you collecting the planets? Like, 
Yeah. I, I think that, that what you're describing here is probably a five to six year AAA project. Sure. Um, I, I think that's realistic. I do think it's doable, especially at the budget behind it. I want, I'm going to ask you a long question. Sure. Um, Short answer, a long question. Here. Yeah, well, we'll see how the answer is. So when I think of Superman, I think faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Yes, Superman, straight visitor from another planet. He came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can bend seal with his bare hands, change the course of mighty rivers, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great met- metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth justice in the American way. Does your game encapsulate that? I like to imagine. You know what I mean? It's, a, it's obviously a work in progress and stuff. I think the 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 albatross right or not that's not the right word the mountain i have to overcome is getting people to the same page i am where clark is superman you know what i mean like it's not i I hate that kill bill uh, volume two story right where he's like clark kent is the mask and superman's the person and i'm like oof no like that's not my clark my Mm -hmm. clark is clark and he puts on the s and does all these things but he go when he thinks of himself he thinks of himself as i'm lois's husband i ride at the daily planet i'm superman i do i do the good things i could but everybody's superman everybody should do the right thing right and so it's the I think we get the I think you get the powers right even with the problems we're talking about right I think that it is of course he's not gonna be as fast as some people want him to be he's not gonna be as strong as some people want him to be it, I, I think it, it comes down to giving you specific missions that don't cut off your powers don't like let not let you access your heat vision or your breath but give you a reason you can't right mm-hmm. that's what it comes down to in making it we've already established how fast he can be right yeah and we understand that he wants to keep a secret identity so i do see that you know that the he's at the bank uh, trying to get something done or wherever he's at and a hostage situation pops off and he's clark and it is that thing fuck i'm surrounded by people heat vision yes super breath maybe no yeah but i mean like no super, yeah, yeah. Super, i hate it when they use super breath like that like yeah heat vision could work but then it's like, it's like giving yeah. you these creative ways or it's the other way of like yeah you know we could use super breath but we're in this enclosed area and i don't want not this no, that, mission you but know? that's classic superman storytelling is right. place i mean that happens in a third of the comics and, and, he's in and, he finds himself in a situation where he can't use half his my, powers my, the, you know the mm-hmm. the ying to the yang right is the fact that when you're doing the open world stuff and you are engaging street gangs or you are doing this that is totally do how you want to do it you know what i mean but i do want it to be that in these specific missions, we're giving you a reason you can't use that, and it makes sense to you. And you're not feeling like I'm taking it away from you. You're making I'm making you think outside of the box on why you have to do it that way. Now you've already talked about uh, articles of agency, uh, ways that you can choose to hit different areas before going to Zod, things like that. Incentives for doing that. Is there any final agency in your story? Is this The Last of Us where no? You oh, make yeah, a it is, I'm sorry. Yes, it is or The Last is of Us. Okay. We're telling you a story. Okay. I feel like when games and video when video game stories succeed. For the most part, mm-hmm. it's that they're telling you the story. Okay. You, you are you are along for the ride and you are doing things, but it's not going to be some weird choice at the end. Because again, I think there's only one choice to make. You know what I mean? Like, it's not Superman's going to. Is he good or is he? Yeah, bad? you know what I mean. Like, I, the, I I I think that there's a really interesting game in letting Telltale do that. I, I, I would love to pitch a different game that is a Superman Telltale game where it yeah. is just choice based and it is did you hit the right button but who what crook do you want to go to you know what I mean two bullets are coming out and you can only get to one because yeah. we have established how fast you are Absolutely. but in this situation with the game I'm pitching now two missiles perhaps one head for Hackensack the other for the San Andreas fault but you can only stop one I know you my mother lives with- in Hackensack right, exactly I could go on and on. Too. Oh yeah, that's the yeah, that, that was that was not making fun of no, the no, time. No, no, I know that. Yeah, I was like from Superman. Oh, yeah, Gene Hackman. Yeah. Yeah. I'm aware yeah. of the reference. Okay. No, 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 no. I was right there. Miss well, my God. If you want more of that, it'll be at the panel at PAX this weekend. Is it being recorded? Uh, it is being streamed on Twitch.tv. They have not said anything about recording that well um, they, you'll be able to find the twitch archive yeah we'll do no definitely put it up do what we do where you can i i want kevin to take our panel i'll work on him doing yours too where you use obs and put it up okay i didn't know what to, i didn't quite know what the parameters were no nah, pax doesn't care they want you to promote pax all right great now it's time for everyone's favorite oh, i forgot game within a podcast <laughs> that's right it's time for it's no game or bullshit. It's no game or bullshit. Enjoy the read some stuff and we'll bend you. I think it's over. I feel like it's been a duck stage since I played mobile game or bullshit. It's been a while. You since you've been right. gone, I have won, Greg. Yep. I'm no longer a complete loser. That's right. Just 
for the most part. You beat Andre Seegers. Huh? I did. Tim Gettys has won a the, game the, of mobile game or bullshit. And you won it pretty convincingly. Yeah. Even yeah. Close. yeah. Yeah, I wasn't even close. But what you have yet zero. to do is defeat Greg Miller, who might or might not be the champ at this point. I don't even know anymore. You know, we have I, too many championships. It's yeah, it's a little it's a little confusing. I've been moved to the international, but bullshit, not yeah. the Intercontinental. Intercontinental. I don't know anymore, man. I, Intercontinental oh, champion. Man. That's how Edge used to say it. <sighs> What's that? Don't worry about it. What's right. this week's theme? Ladies and gentlemen, today's theme is mobile game or Petbridge Farm cookie. That's right. <laughs> mobile game or Petbridge Farm cookie. Can you identify the difference between them? Ladies and gentlemen, we have five mobile games. Some of the descriptions are real. Some of the descriptions are fake. You really won't know until the end. Greg Miller, you're going to go first because you're, you are technically taking on last week's champion. Are we doing the same thing where one's both? Huh? Are we Not doing this, this time? <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> oh, this one is a cookie. This and time, game. No. <laughs> no, I decided it's decided to. Uh, I do have a tiebreaker if it comes down to that, but uh, did decide to to lean off on that. So, Greg Miller, first one: mobile game or Pepperidge Farm cookie? Township, a super positive game. What crops will you grow? That's a game. That's a mobile game. So that's a mobile game. Tim Gettys, Township, a super positive game. What crops will you grow? Cookie. Cookie. Yeah. Tim Gettys. Uh, San Juan. The exciting card game based on the award winning strategy game Puerto Rico, now available for your Android device. San Juan. I'm realizing now how much I don't know Pepperidge Farm cookies that aren't Sausalito. I was going to say, aren't they just Milano? <laughs> San Juan. San Juan. Oh, man. Cookie. Cookie. Greg Miller. I'm saying cookie as well. Cookie as well. By the way, I want to let you guys know that I tried these out on Joey Noel before the show. She went five for five. Fuck. Yeah, she totally God, them th all. Ne never let her play this game. <laughs> Number three, Greg Miller. Yeah. Chessmen. The Knights have stepped off the board. That's Chess a game. Men. That's a game. Tim Gettys. Chessmen. That is a cookie. That is a cookie. That is, in fact, a cookie. I know it's a cookie. You know it's I a cookie. Had, you cheat. That's inside information, I and cookie. I will not give you that point. The chessmen cookies. cookies with the little pictures of the chess people on it. They're good cookies. Number four. Do you like to change your vote, Greg? Tim Gettys. Sanibel. Sanibel. Cookie. The lovely Sanibel, maiden of the border town. Cookie. Greg I'm going all in, baby. I say San cookie as well. Cookie. Number five. Greg Miller. Yeah. Tokaido. Each player is a traveler crossing the East Sea Road, one of the most magnificent roads of Japan. Hokkaido. Hokkaido? Or Tokaido? Tokaido, pardon me. I'm sorry. Hokkaido is an is a island. I'm sticking with game. Sticking with game. This Tim is the Gettys. one that's making me think it might be a game, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm going for it. Five oh, for five, Kev. Shit. You're Cookie. Great. He wouldn't do that two weeks Say in a row. Cookie! Ladies and gentlemen, going down the list. Township, a super positive game. What crops will you grow? That's totally a mobile game. Yeah. Yes. San Juan, the exciting card game based on the award-winning strategy game. Puerto Rico, now available for your Android device. Totally a mobile game. No. Yes, indeed. And really based on Puerto Rico. An excellent board game if you never had a chance to we play We still it. differ here. This is the our San most divisive one. Santa Cruz, on the other hand, totally a cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, Chessman. Tim Gettys, correct. Cookie with chess man. I that, that cookie. The knights have stepped off the board and into Tim's stomach. That's oh, right. yeah. Number four, Sanibel. The lovely Sanibel, maiden of the border town. Totally a cookie. We both, yeah. we both got That's that. All right. This is, it comes down to number five. Oh. Okay. Number five. Tokaido. Each player is a traveler crossing the East Sea Road, one of the most magnificent roads in Japan. Tokaido, ladies and gentlemen. Mobile game. Yeah. No. Oh. Fuck you, Tim. Hit the song, Kevin. I win three to two. Yeah, you did. You did. That was a good, hard fought battle, though, Greg. I appreciate it. I want some chessman cookies right now. Oh, man. I also good. challenge the, the audience out there to make a animation or like intro video that goes along with the, with the song to that. Because oh. I feel like. There's some talented people. It's a lot of fun. I want to thank somebody while you guys were gone, sent in Star Trek mobile gamer, Star Trek episode. And we had a lot of fun with that. A couple of I want to thank. I don't remember whose idea it was, but thanks community for that one. That was a good one. You got us with those. This, this one, Angie's idea. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. I was like, what should we do? And she's like, mobile game or pepperidge farm cookies. She didn't wait to spell it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the Seattle area this weekend, Greg and Jared will see you at PAX. 
If you're not, we'll see you here <laughs> on twitch.tv slash kind of funny the next couple games, days. Games. Games. Yep. <laughs> kind of funny games. You said yeah, twitch.tv right. slash kind of funny games. You're right. You're right. YouTube.com slash kind of funny game. I love you. Hey, hope you like that episode. Click here to subscribe to kind of funny games, I guess. Oh my God. <laughs> Click there to subscribe to kind of funny. Click here to subscribe to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Whatever Kevin puts there. Playlist. A playlist. Patreon. Subscribe to a playlist. The and then Patreon's over there. The other channel. We have two channels. We got the two channels. I'm saying the one, it goes to one, one channel or the other channel.